Right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me or good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. <clears throat> if you can see me and hear me OK, please let me know in the chat if everything is working and I will just refresh the chat now to get it on screen. Hopefully that will work. Chat is working. Right. OK, so welcome to part one of my solo campaign playthrough series for Maracaibo. Unfortunately, today hasn't gone completely to plan and my previous live stream overran by 30 minutes, which means I'm not completely set up yet. So apologies for that. Uh, I did want to start this on time, but I am not finished setting up the game yet. So part one is going to be uh, fairly rough. I am going to be finishing setting up the game. I'm also going to be relearning how to play. Now, I know I know half of how to play, but it's been probably a year since I played this game. So part one is going to be a bit rough. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Alexander's in the chat as well. Um, yeah, if I get any rules wrong, please point them out. Uh, it will get better uh, as, as future episodes go on. I'm planning to play this at least once a week for the next uh, few weeks, maybe even more, uh, and play through the whole campaign. So I've started setting up, um, just so you know, I'm using the, um, the E-Raptor inserts. Uh, I've got an E-Raptor insert for this. Is it E-Raptor? Yeah, I think it's E-Raptor. Yeah, so uh, I've got these overlay things which hold all of the stuff. Uh, I've got these combat tokens that are in the thing. This is really useful, so you don't have to take them out. Uh, it's a storage tray for all the cubes, and you literally just put it on the board there. So that, that's actually really useful. I also have the metal coins, but I can't find them. <laughs> I will dig them out before next time, because the metal coins are really nice for this game. Um, and yeah, I just, I just didn't manage to find them in time. So here we go. Oh, also, because it's a campaign, spoilers. Um, there is a bit of a story in this game so if you do want to experience that yourself you are going to have the story spoilt by this don't worry it isn't one of those narrative games that once you know the story you can't play the game um so you're not going to get spoiled in that way but you are going to obviously know what the story is and i can't remember how many it is 13 games says mikhail uh yeah my plan today is to do two games okay my plan today is to play for about three hours uh, and hopefully do Tay games, but we'll see how it goes. If uh, if I've done two games and it's still four o'clock, then I'll do a third game. But based on the fact that I don't remember how to play, I think we might be here. Uh, a the first game is going to be rough, and as I say, it's going to go a bit, a bit slow. So, player setup. Um, well, let, let's do the rest of the setup and make sure I've got this right. So we've done the game board. We've got the combat tokens in two face down piles. Uh, the quest tiles. They are these are all here. So what you normally do is you would normally put one big stack of quest tiles here, sorry, here, uh, and the story tiles there. But one big stack of quest tiles is actually quite tall. So what I've got, uh, I've got them split up over to two different ones, uh, and they are in another E-Raptor insert there. Is the colour okay on the screen? It looks a little bit washed out. Could be because I've upped the, I've got the curtains open, so it could be that. Oh, there you go. Let's have a bit more colour. Yeah, there you go. Bit more colour. You're all here to help me make bad decisions. Yes. <laughs> right. So the quest tiles have been shuffled. Uh, the four story tiles, that's these. These are, these are off camera. So four story tiles in order. I'll keep them off camera for now. We're going to need them. In a two player game, we cover the city of Maracaibo with a two player tile. I've done that. This is the two player tile for Maracaibo. So that goes there. It just makes it so that you can only deliver one sugar instead of two. That goes there. Um, then look for the remaining city tiles. So I've sorted out the city tiles. The rest of the city tiles, I've sorted them out. I've taken the ones out for three and four players. Um, and then basically you take two city tiles marked with the captain's wheel. Has the captain's wheel got a specific name? <laughs> so Alexander is saying that Rene knows the rules better than, uh, better than you do. Is Rene here? Didn't see him in the chat. Right, okay. Okay, so we're looking for... Take the two city tiles marked with the captain's wheel icon. Ah, there. That's those two, right? And randomly choose two more. Okay. One, two. Okay, and then these get shuffled together and randomly place them onto the spaces intended for the following location. So Puerto Plata, uh, which is number four. 
There you go. And you do this every game. So although it's a campaign and it evolves and the board evolves, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we actually do this random one each game. Santo Domingo, which is there, which is number five. Port Royal, another game, number 13. Uh, and Cartagena, another game, number 14. How many games are on this board? <laughs> Tortuga is a game. Santiago is a game. Cartagena is a game. Portobello, I think, is a game. Port Royal is a game. Maracaibo is a game. San Juan is a game. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of places on here that are actually games in their own right. Okay, we've done that. That's the city tiles. Separate the project cards into A and B. I've done that. I've got a card holder for them. So we've got the A cards here uh, with the dark. No, sorry, the A cards are here with the dark rope. So I'm going to swap them around so that it's A and then B. Okay. Uh, starting from your second game, there may be C cards which get added to the deck. Uh, now, one of the criticisms that I did have was that it's actually quite hard to tell uh, the rope colours between B and C, but I think the C cards are the story cards with the number in the bottom right. Okay, so that's another way to identify them. Shuffle the pile of A cards and B cards separately. I've done that. Deal each player eight cards from the A pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maracaibo is a game. Yes, it is. Believe it or not. <laughs> We're playing it now. Uh, expansion should be out in a few months and they are working on an app version of the game as well. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So yeah, an app version of this game that I'm super looking forward to and I'm in contact with the people who are making it. Um, I have asked them if I can provide some sneak preview coverage of the game. I keep asking them, like, you know, every 12 hours. They're not getting, they're not, they're ignoring my emails now, um, which is surprising. You'd have thought, you know, if I'd have contacted them every 12 hours that they'd, no, anyway. Um, each player gets eight cards from this. Okay, so we're going to choose four of these to start with. They are our starting eight cards. Count 40 cards from the B pile. So we give the B pile a shuffle. Uh, have I been to any of these play? Yes. So me and Vicky went on a Caribbean cruise about eight years ago now, maybe nine years ago now. So we have been this bit. Yeah, we've been around this bit. I remember going to St. Kitts. Uh, Martinique ring, rings a bell as well. Um, so yeah, so I, I have been on a Caribbean cruise around this bit. Uh, and yeah, it was, oh, it was expensive because it was a cruise, but it's one of those things that I'm, I'm glad I've done. Uh, and I'm glad I've seen, you know, a bit of that part of the world. Uh, the best part of the Caribbean cruise that we went to was when we went to Mexico. We had a day in Mexico and the stuff that we did there was, was, was fantastic. It was really good. Oops. Right, so 40 of these cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve. Some of these cards have slightly different colored backs, I've just noticed, because there is a mini expansion for this game that I have shuffled in. So I think the card backs are not completely identical, which is really hard to do. 6, 38, sorry, 28, 30, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right, I think that is 40. Six, eight, 10, 14, 16, 18, 20, 40. Yes, right, so those 40, these are the cards that are going to be used in this game. And again, I think every time you play, you do this again. So the next game we play, uh, we'll, I, I will basically go through this setup again. Maracaibo app is delayed to April 21 or later. That's still not too bad. That's still not too bad. Uh, and people are asking about this. This is the Automa board. Yes, yeah, so one of the player boards uh, is double-sided and comes with the Automa board on the other side. Um, what was odd is that they only printed that on one of the boards. You know, I mean, yes, you only need it on one of the boards, but it just seemed a bit, a bit odd because you've got to go hunting for it. Um, in a two-player game, red, white, and blue cubes go in locations six, seven, and eight. Ooh, well, I've not got to that bit yet. Place the shuffled pile of cards face down next to the game board. Uh, and then reveal the top four cards and put them into a display. I need to work out where the display is going to go 
on this table setup. Because I've got loads of space here. So I might put the display at the top there. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have loads of space here for stuff. Um, it's because of these cards. If it weren't for these cards, I could zoom in a bit further. In fact, that's what I might do. That's what I might do. Instead of those cards being at the top, which is where they're supposed to be, but what I could do is I could actually zoom in a bit more to give you a bit more of the game on screen. Okay, and then I'll just put those cards, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll put those cards there instead. Okay, how's that? Uh, that means you've got a little bit more, uh, a little bit bigger space. So uh, what we were doing with the deck of cards, right? The deck of cards is going here. I think this is going to work. I'm not sure. It might do, it might not. My board's going to go there. And we get four in a display. We have a sailor, a pioneer, a conquer, villi a conquer village, and a master builder. Right. OK, there we go. Uh, you've always house ruled that you have four objectives known at the start. You're a man after my own heart. I like to play games with knowing what's coming. I don't like to be surprised three quarters of the way through the game with something that, oh, well, if I'd have known that, I would have played the game completely differently. Um, and I'm glad I'm quite small today because I haven't actually, I went out for a jog this morning and I got back and I've not actually showered, changed or got ready yet. So <laughs> it's been one of those days. It's been rushing around. So, so much for a day off. Um, <clears throat> doubloons. I've got them off camera. Top four cards. We've done that. Shuffle the prestige buildings and place four of them along the top of the game board. Um, yeah, a face up one and then three face down ones. Right. Okay. So we're going to shuffle these. I mean, I like the way these prestige buildings work, but I also get the argument that um, not knowing what's coming means you can't actually plan that well. But there are only eight of them in the game. So we know that the palace uh, gives you points per quests. So at the end of the game, if we manage to go on there, then we're going to get two points per quest that we have accomplished at the end of the game. Place the ownership markers onto the like coloured spaces. Yeah, so we've done that. That's those. In a two player game only. Ah, this is what you were saying earlier on. <clears throat> In a two player game, immediately place a red ownership marker onto the village at six, San Juan. A white ownership marker onto the village at seven, St. Kitts. And a blue ownership marker onto the village at eight, Martinique. Okay. When adding ownership markers to the board, always take the leftmost available marker. Yes. Okay. So that is the, uh, what is it? The French, the Spanish, and the English. That's the initial control that they have. Okay. Player setup. We've got a ship board, uh, two discs. And on this cutout, the discs are not stacked up. They are next to each other. Um, wooden components. Victory point marker is down here. Ship is on Havana. Uh, Explorer is on the start space here. Influence marker here on space zero uh, space one of the combat track uh, space eight of the doubloon track and space zero of the victory point track also each player gets two uh, of these at the start of the game there is more available but you start the game with two uh, they are figures you also start with two career cards career cards now i had them where have i put them these are the career cards and again i'm playing with the expansion so i've actually got a few in here uh what's this not in the official rules the prestige buildings can all be open they could if you want to oh story tiles count as quest two okay so there's an official variant from the third printing on that you can play with them all open well if that is an official rule then I'm going to play with it, okay? Because that is my preferred play style. Now, it's all going to be a bit overwhelming. I do get the point of if you reveal them all, there's too much for some people to take into account. I, I totally get that. Uh, but apparently I'm an experienced gamer. So I, I'm going to use that official variant. Right, two career cards. Um, 
Start player is the player who is most recently on board a ship. Give that player eight doubloons. I remember when we started playing Puerto Rico when it first came out. From that point on, every game we played, the currency was always doubloons. Kind of gone away from that now. It's more just gold or dollars. Right, first decision. Do you want to play the campaign? Yes. Spoilers. Right, play story card one onto the corresponding space on the board. Story card one is here. Do we not need to choose the thing first? No, I guess not. Right. Yeah, so two career cards and an overview card. The overview was really good in this game. It was like a player reference card with loads of stuff on it. Um, so yeah, that's really good. I'll keep that here, just off camera. He says. No, it's still sort of on camera. Okay, I'll keep it here. Is that off camera? Yeah, that's off camera. Right. So do you want to play the campaign? Yes, play story card one onto the corresponding space on the board. And this is the bit I got confused uh, <laughs> with where it was, but it is there. Yeah, 15, it's there. This is the first printing of the rules. I got this uh, as soon as it came out the day, or uh, yeah, the, the day before Essen actually. Read the card and follow the instructions. Right, okay, so chapter one of the campaign. Are we all ready? A mysterious plague has broken out in Portobello. Oh, these shouldn't be here. They are my eight starting cards. Um, looters in the city take advantage of the emergency. Gloria, the sister of your first officer, lives here. She needs your protection. Okay, so we place this here. Uh, and then what we do, we um, draw quest tiles and add them to various locations depending on the number of players. So it's 15. We always put a story one in 15 and we put a quest one in 16 and if it was a four player game there would also be one in 19. It says we won't need the story tiles, the legacy cards and the story cards so return oh so that's the, if you're not playing the campaign sorry ignore me. Play story tile one next to the intended location so story tile one is next to 15 which is that and we need a, a random quest one now which one should I take from first I think I should take from the because again these are supposed to be in one stack So I, yeah, the fact that they've been split into two stacks, uh, how am I going to remember which one to take next? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that one and then I'm going to cover that one up. Okay, so I know that that one is the next one that I'm going to take and then I'll, and then I'll switch. So that goes there in blue fields. There we go. <clears throat> George is here. And yes, please remember to click like on the video. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you're watching this not live, please leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed it uh, and if you want to see more. And if you don't want to see more, there's going to be more anyway. I am playing through the whole solo campaign. Um, not today, <laughs> but gradually. Right. Now, each player chooses what to do with the eight project cards they were dealt. Keep four in hand. Add one to one of the three planning spaces. Oh, I need a planning space. Yeah. Okay. This is going to have to move to here. There we go, it just about fits on. So out of these four cards, four of them are going to go into my hand, one of them is going to go into my planning area, and then three are going to go to the discard pile. Now, as I remember, uh, or if I remember correctly, the planning area is kind of like, well, it's sort of in your hand. You can build it from there, but you can't play it for its other effects. Um, yeah, I need three quests in the exploration track. You're right, I do, thank you. So. I, did, I, I obviously missed that in the setup. So that one goes there. That one goes there. And then that one goes there. Did I miss the bit in the setup that told me to do that? I think I did. Number three. Take three quest tiles and place them onto the three spaces. I did miss it. Right, okay. So out of these cards that we have, uh, we have the Master Builder, which I think is quite good because um, you need cheap cards early on and it gives you a discount for buying all other cards so I quite like that. The Quest Hunter gives me a permanent compass. Compasses are quite good from what I remember uh, and again that's relatively cheap to play. We have a Smuggler uh, which is, allows me to put an assistant on Island 7 which is sent kits which means I'll get a bonus every time I go there. Um, it also gives me that medal. Does it give me that medal? Or, yeah, I think it gives me that medal. 
Uh, Michael de Gramont. I can only play that if France owns at least three locations. So I think that's going to the discard pile. We have a harbour, which is a really good card, but it costs 16 to play. We have another quest hunter. <clears throat> we have another master builder. And we have a conquer village card. Um, any, any suggestions? Any suggestions? It depends which gene cards go in. Some of the cards are harder. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Um, because I don't really know what I'm doing. The more I play this, the more I'm going to get to know these cards. But I think... Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Assistant actions, I seem to remember being quite good. And this smuggler will allow me to place an assistant on sent kit, which means I can then stop there and I can do some stuff. But the harbour and the conquer village both are expensive cards and I'm probably not going to be able to play them. So I'm actually going to get rid of the harbour card. That's going to go to the discard pile. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to get rid of the... Do I keep both master builders? I mean, that's going to make it a lot cheaper to play cards. What do you think? Should I put one Master Builder in play? Oh, there's three slots. I thought there was four slots. Looks like there's three. Okay. Um, which of these cards am I going to get rid of? Let's get rid of one of the Quest Hunters. Oh. No, I kind of want to keep them because they combo well with the Conquer of the Village because of the um, Synergy tokens. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the other Master Builder. Right, so those are on the discard pile. I'm going to put that, that slightly off camera. So these are the four cards in my hand. Now what I should have done is I should have looked at my career cards first. Because um, you simultaneously choose which one of the two career cards to keep. Place the chosen card next to your ship board and return the others to the box. This is like mini objectives that I'm going to be doing in the game. So I have, uh, and this is a new one, okay? So uh, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if this camera is going to do the, the focusing to get today or not. Is it going to, is it not going to? If anybody knows how to get a camera to autofocus quicker, please let me know because this doesn't seem to want to. I've seen other people who do YouTube streams, like Rob's gaming table, he lifts it up to the camera and straight away it focuses. And I lift it up to the camera and nothing happens. So I don't know why my camera doesn't want to focus. Is it, is it focusing? Is it focusing? It's not. And autofocus is on. So, yeah, you put your hand behind the cards. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, I, you know, the cards alone should be enough. Oh, there you go. Right, that's how you do it. I, I, I obviously need something else. Rob is a magician. I know that. But there you go. There's the two cards that I've got. So I clearly need some kind of little tray. Uh, that I can hold up to the camera. I wonder if it'll work on the iPad. Bear with us a minute while I just experiment with my... There we go. If I hold the iPad up, will that focus? Yeah, there you go. Right. So, my tatty iPad case. This is hurting my hand, by the way. So, the Spanish is a new card from the expansion, and then there is Urge of Discovery. Which one of those do you think I should go for? Uh, as my career. I mean, the Spanish is going to be on quests. The Urge for Discovery is on quests. So, both of them are quests. The Spanish is Synergy Tokens. I'm planning to take at least two Synergy Tokens with the cards that I've collected, whereas the Urge for Discovery is Ship Upgrades, and the Spanish is for Spanish locations on the board rather than the Explorer track. Okay, so any, any preferences? Yeah, you're, so Gnome says, pick an objective that more easily counters Gene's strategy. I don't know what Gene's strategy is. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good point, it's a good idea, but I don't know what gene strategy is. How do I know what gene strategy is? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to up the colour of me a bit because I look a little bit pale. Is that it? Have I got a bit more colour? I've got a bit more colour. Right. <clears throat> Uh, the Discovery one, the one on the right. Okay, we're going for the Discovery one. So we're going to get rid of the Spanish career card. 
uh, and we're going to put that we'll put that here actually so that is my career that is that is the thing that i'm trying to do right next from the second game onwards we do some extra stuff okay solo <clears throat> so for solo we set up as per a two-player game which is what we've done um solo rules are here we go set up the game as for a two-player game but with the following changes choose a color for gene it's going to be green because <clears throat> it rhymes with gene uh she has her ship her explorer but no figures right okay so come on out you come ship explorer no figures victory point marker goes on the zero space along with me uh, she does not receive any project cards she does not collect doubloons she does not collect combat points three influence markers go on there one two three <clears throat> um gene receives the autumn aboard place a disc above each victory point symbol on the track along the bottom of the autumn aboard oh right okay Need some more discs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Place a disc above each victory point symbol on the track along the bottom of the autumn board, i.e., onto each yellow space. Oh, plus the spaces between them. Okay, right. More discs. Yeah, unfortunately, the e Raptor insert that came with it didn't include uh, a thing for this either. But to be honest, getting indentations for all of these things this close together, I mean, these, these unfortunately haven't fit in. You've got to kind of push these in. These could have done with being bigger. The, uh, the, the plastic holes on, on this, yeah, don't quite fit the discs. The nice insert, but yeah, just could have done with being a bit bigger holes. Sort the Automa cards. So that's these. The Automa cards, we've got A's, B's, and C's. And depending on how hard we want the game, depending on which ones we do. Now, uh, we've got very easy, we've got easy, we've got medium, we've got hard, and we've got very hard. Oh, you can just one move disc. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> Rene says you could have just used one disc above the zero and moved it instead of removing one. Yeah, you're right, I could have done. Um, I want to have to place a crew member on each of my things on the card. Thank you. I'd forgotten about that. One, two, three. Because I will get that crew member whenever I've done that objective. So what difficulty level do you think I should play on? Please don't pick very hard. Bear in mind I've not played this game in over a year. I'm thinking possibly easy, maybe medium. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to play on hard or very hard and I don't want to play on very easy. So what do you think in the chat? Easy or medium? Let me know what you want me to play on. Uh, it's, it's five A cards and a C card. It's whether I put a B card in as well. So I'm going to take the five A cards. I'm going to take a random C card. Okay. And if you want me to play on medium. Okay, so uh, medium, medium, medium. It's okay to lose. Medium, medium, easy, medium. For a man of my fibre, <laughs> is that fiber oh Cal calibra uh medium yes okay we're going to go with medium so thank you very much for the uh for the nice thoughts is that a b card yeah there's a lot of b cards right so that goes in there this gets shuffled this is the automa pile and this is going to go here okay right there we go we're almost done Gameplay, you are the start player, after which you and Jean take turns. Uh, on Jean's turn, draw a card from the Automa pile and follow its, its instructions. We'll do that when we get to it. So, here we go. Yeah, before we start, just a quick, uh, a quick thing about how this video came into effect. So, apologies if this is a boring story. But, last year, uh, my workload and my personal situation spiralled completely out of control. By the time it got to September... 
I was getting really fed up, hit a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety issues, and I had to make some changes to my life. And what I decided to do, oh, and one of the things that was actually making me feel bad was the fact that I have a number of great games in my collection that I just don't have time to play. Um, that was mainly because the workload had, had gone out of control and I was working about 80 hours a week and didn't have any free time. But anyway, one of the games which was in the back of my mind was Maracaibo because I, it has a campaign and I really wanted to play through the campaign and I just didn't. And it, and it went on for too long and it was about a year and I was like, this is silly. I've got all these great games. I work full time in the games industry. Why don't I have time to take these games, uh, to play these games? So what I've decided to do uh, for January, uh, which is where we are now, I've basically taken the month off work. So I am not doing any sponsored live streams for the whole month. But as you will see from my channel, I am doing a lot of live streams, but none of them are sponsored. It's all funded through the Patreon campaign. And one of the things that I set myself as a, <clears throat> I've got a bit of toast in my throat. One of the things that I set myself as a goal to do was to play the Maracaibo campaign. Now, ideally that would have been with other people, but because of lockdown uh, in the UK, that's not possible at the moment. So that's why I'm playing through the Maracaibo solo campaign. I've been really looking forward to this for over a year and yeah, taking the month off work has basically enabled me to do it. Because to be honest, if it weren't for taking time off, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So there you go. There's the story. Um, a huge thank you to all of my patron supporters who are basically funding me for this month uh, to produce all of this content. Um, and yeah, if you like what I do and you want to support the channel uh, and make more non-sponsored videos, then uh, yeah, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. I won't regret it. No, I definitely won't regret it. And one of the things that I'm going to be uh, very, very happy about at the end of this solo campaign is not that I've played a great game because I do, I do like the game and that I've played it through is the fact that I've ticked it off a list. And I love making lists and I love ticking things off a list so that they're done. And the whole playing the Maracaibo campaign has been bothering me for a very, very long time with the fact that I just haven't managed to do it. Anyway, on with the game. Gameplay. Now, I remember bits of it. <laughs> I remember that we play over four rounds and a round ends when somebody gets all the way to here. I remember that. On your turn is three phases, A, B, and C, which are summarized on the player aid. And it, A is really simple. A, you can move up to one to seven spaces. And then B is where most of the stuff happens. Uh, and then C, you redraw cards, okay? Um, and you can either visit the cities or the villages. Uh, and when you visit a village, the number of village actions you get to do depends on how far you moved. Um, or you can fulfill a so it's a city or village or quest or use an assistant. And then at any point you can do that stuff. So we, we, will, we will prack on. Yeah, take a break from playing games to play some more games. Yeah, but it's different. Doing a video like this, which is not sponsored in any way of a game that I want to play is a completely different mindset to this is a sponsored video. This has to be absolutely spot on and perfect. Uh, and there's no way I would have done a sponsored video where I was still eating my lunch and not having not set up the game. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. So where are we going to sail? Uh, lots of people in the chat know the game and have played the game a lot. What is your preferred strategy? Is it slow and steady or is it zooming ahead? Let me know. I'm not saying what's the best strategy for here. I'm just saying how many people zoom ahead like four or five spaces a turn or how many of them take it nice and slow. I'm going to have a look at what cards I've got in hand because I have two tobacco and two corn. Is it corn? So I, I could just go to Santiago. Right away at the start of the game, I could go to Santiago. I deliver some uh, tobacco uh, and I get, I get that and that. Now, what, what was the weird thing with this game? But you get that even if you don't deliver? Yeah, I think you get the bonus even if you don't deliver. But delivering is good because delivering gets you a disc off your off your board. Um, <clears throat> how do I play a card? That is the village action, isn't it? Village action is buy a card. Yeah. Uh, nice and slow. There's one. Um, whereas Simon says you only get to do four or so turns in a round. Depends on the cards, the goals and the players. OK, yeah, good point. You can skip the delivery, but you should rarely do that. Yeah, so I, but the thing is, I've decided to keep these cards. These are the four cards that I've decided to keep because I had an idea of what to do with them. So now, if I end up doing the delivery, 
I then don't actually, oh, this is the problem. I've chosen to keep these cards. So my, I now have a personal connection to these cards <laughs> and I'm now gonna have to lose one of them to deliver. I kind of want to play the Master Builder first. Yeah, because if I go here, I get that and I get to do a village action and the village action could be to play the Master Builder. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that. Let's, let's move one, right? There you go. I've moved one. Deliver. I'm going to deliver and I am going to deliver using a Quest Hunter. So for those people who don't know the game, cards are multi-use cards. Uh, and on the left hand side, is this going to work with me hand there? No, it really doesn't like it, does it? Yeah. So uh, on the left hand side, there are two icons and one of those icons is a, a resource or a good that you can deliver. If you do that, you lose the rest of the card. But that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I am going to deliver a good. So I, you basically the card just goes to the discard pile and I take one of these discs off here and put it onto there. Now, taking discs off your player board unlocks the player board. Uh, I do seem to remember from when I played, some of these are actually really good and some of them not so good. Um, so I think I'm going to take this one off because I think that is a good one. Good to remove discs from player board. Getting the six cards in hand is valuable. Yes. So I'm going to remove that one and that goes on there. Uh, and then we get to do this. So that is take another worker. Where's my supply of workers? I've only got two left. Is that right? Okay. I'll take another one of them. And I get to do a, uh, an, a village action. <clears throat> the village actions, there are three village actions you can do. You can buy a card, take a money, or discard all of the cards in your hand to get two money. Now that doesn't, that's not too bad because you draw back up to your hand at the start of the, uh, uh, the, the end of the round. So I'm gonna buy the card. And when you buy a card, I believe you can buy from either your hand or you can buy from your display. The difference between the, uh, your display or your reserve area, what it's called, and the cards in hand is the cards in hand you can use for the bits on the left, whereas the ones in your display you can't. Is that right? I think I've got that right. So I'm gonna spend six. And this actually goes into play. Ah, now here's another problem. Where am I going to put this card? This is now in play. I don't have an in play area. Hmm. Okay. So solo cards are going to have to go up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are going to go up there. Okay, and my in play area is going to be here. So there is one worker on the die stack as a button. There is one worker on the tile stack as a marker, remember. Oh, this one. Sorry, yes, I do have an extra crew. Let's change that for. Uh, let's change that for a green cube. Thank you. There you go. So I'm not taking from there. Right, there you go. Um, on the other side of your career card. Yeah. The chat's about nine seconds delayed. So your available crew is supposed to go in the top right corner of your ship which is where you put yours. Okay, let's see what the rulebook says about where you're supposed to put your cards. If it does, I don't know if it does. Uh, village actions, buying a card. Put it, uh, or in your planning area and buy it. Put the card in your display next to your ship board. It just says next to your ship board. Um, so that, that's gonna be here, okay? Now, we might need to jiggle things around for the next live stream that I do. Um, if there isn't enough space, but that, that is the card that's in this play. So when they're here, they're not in play. When they're here, they are in play. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. We're good. The workers top right of your shipboard as well. Oh, right. Okay. So these, these can go on here. Right. Okay. That will, that will save a bit of space and we'll keep my doubloons there. I definitely need to find the metal coins before the next time I play because the metal coins are really nice. Anyway, we've done that, we've done that, we did that, we did that. I think that's it. I can't remember how you get these cubes on the board. 
at all. <laughs> I think that's that action, isn't it? Yeah, that's that action. Right, so we're done. Uh, we did A, we did B. Uh, the other option is now, is now C, which is basically a redraw card. And if I want to buy from the display, I have to pay a coin. So I can either draw blind from the top of the deck, which is here. Um, in fact, we can have the deck off camera. Yeah, we don't need that on camera. These can all shuffle over a bit. There we go. Let's have the deck off camera. Um, so yeah, so I can draw blind or I can spend one for a particular card from here. Now, I don't think there is a particular card there uh, that I want. It all depends where I'm going to go next. Uh, with what I had in play, because I was going to play the smuggler next, but I need money to play the smuggler. How do you get money? Money's really tight, isn't it? Some, some people might say it's too tight to mention. Reference there to 80s UK music for anybody old enough. Do I have a corn in hand? I think I'm just going to draw blind. I'll draw blind because money's really tight. There you go. <clears throat> so, two workers available, not three. I thought I just gained an extra worker. I thought Santiago was just gained an extra worker. Did I get that right? They're all explained in the back of the rule book. Yeah, they're sort of all explained. Symbol summary. I think, I think I got that right. You started with two. And then I got an extra one. Okay, right, we're good. That's all right. Um, Adam is suggesting about the story card. Yes, <clears throat> we need to remember that when I go to Portobello, which is 15, uh, I need one sword. And if I, if I have one sword, which I do, I get five money. And I get one point per compass, and then I take the story title. That's basically going there and sorting out these looters, because these looters have taken advantage of the situation. So, yeah, you need to make sure you keep in hand the cards that you might need for any, anything that's going on there. But anyway, so we've drawn back up, and we've drawn, we've drawn another smuggler that is almost identical to the previous one. Yeah, slightly different effect, but smuggler in scent kits. Okay, and that is it. That is my go done. So now we're looking at Gene. And here's how it works for the solo rules. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, men, simple summary. Solo variant. Right, so when it's Gene's turn, you basically draw a card from the Automa deck. Uh, and there we go. That is the Automa card. Yes, that focused really quickly. So yeah, so that's the Automa card, and then that tells us what we're going to do, or what Gene's going to do this turn. So first, move Gene's ship as many spaces forward as is indicated. Two. One, two. If there was a choice, um, the shape of the arrow determines whether she sails the upper route or the lower route. Yep, Gene ignores all villages without quests. These are not counted as spaces. Right, that is a village without a quest. So it's not counted. Neither is that. So I think Gene goes here. The chat will shout me if I get it wrong. Um, so Gene ignores all villages without quest. These are not counted as spaces. This means that Gene will always end her movement in either a city or a location with a quest. Done. Uh, if legacy tiles reveal new cities, they also count for Jean. No, nope, not got any of that. Right, quest. If Jean's ship ends in a location with a quest, no. City. If Jean's ship ends in a city, check if a market space in this city is still empty. It is. Um, if yes, take the leftmost disc from the row on the Automa board and add it to the market. Okay. If not... Instead, take the indicated project card from the display, which would be the third one, okay, 
and place it face down next to the Ultima board, then refill the display. Since you can never deliver goods in homeward bound spaces, which is these, I think, Jean will always take cards from the display. Right, after Jean has delivered a good or taken a card, she performs the actions indicated on the card. These actions do not depend on what city Jean's ship is in. Bold exclamation mark. Okay, so we have icons. We have two exploration, rounds three and four, four exploration. So it's two exploration. Jean moves her explorer two spaces forward. One, two. Uh, if a quest tile is within her movement, she moves to it and stops foregoing any additional movement. Otherwise, she always chooses the shortest path. Jean doesn't gain any rewards for crossing barriers or reaching the end of the explorer tribe, but she does reduce your explorer's bonuses. Right. That's it. Yeah, that text on the bottom is actually just more of a detailed explanation. Uh, it's a shorter summary of what we've just done. Right, okay. Uh, Jean goes to fall. Yes, cool, right. That's that done. Thank you, Renee, for being here. This is useful. My go next. What are we going to do? Um, so I haven't unlocked this ability yet, so I still have to move four spaces to get a double village action. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. If, if we want money, and I think you get money for conquering these spaces in order for me to play the smuggler then i think we're gonna go to santa domingo oh no that's not combat is it what's that icon that icon is that i can't remember the difference between that icon and that icon I'll look it up, but the chat's probably telling me. Gain one influence with the nation of your choice, then... Perf right, so yeah, that is gain one influence with the village of your... Oh yeah, that's simple, you just move up. I don't want to do that. I actually want to put one of those on the board in order to, to get the money. How do you get money? It's really hard. <laughs> Although moving up there is VP. So do we go one and do one village action? I, I don't think we do. Do we go two and do a city action? I'm not going to be able to play this smuggler before we get there, are we? No, because I went and chose the master builder first and now I'm thinking I probably shouldn't have done. I should have played, should have played that instead. Um, do that double village action would get me uh, still not enough okay so make the, uh, this whole smuggler idea i shouldn't have done that if you if you're going to let me change my mind on this now that i've worked out that i wasn't going to get enough money i'm going to undo that i'm going to cheat and i'm going to put the smuggler in play and it was the smuggler that i already had in play and i can't remember which one that was so i'm going to shuffle these i get money at the end of the round I think you get money at the end of the round. Yeah, but I need it now. <laughs> uh, fight and claim a $4 village for dollars. Yes. Four victory points for Jean. Oh, does Jean get four points printed on it? I missed that. Okay, thank you. So I, I have cheated. We've just rewound time. Um, and instead of playing the master builder, I played the smuggler. Okay. That's what I did. Honestly. Which means... I spent the seven and I had to take one of my workers and put it on here. Okay, so I now have an assistant in sent kit and I believe I get this synergy token for playing it. Right. Okay, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. So I'm still here. <laughs> I'm deciding what to do. One, two, three. I think I'm going to go to Scent Kits. Ah, but if you go there, you can... Uh, yeah, right, okay. Yeah. 
You can get money from a village action. Yeah, one village action is one money, isn't it? But if you unlock something, you get a money and a combat point. That. Yeah, if you unlock that, then I think a village action allows you to get that or something like that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move four. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to arrive at St. Kitts. And I am going to choose to use my assistant. And I think this means I use this blue area here. So I am discarding three identical goods. Thankfully, I do have three identical goods. Now, it is cards that I was going to use at some point, but I have three, three corn. They get discarded. I get five coins. I get two victory points. And I get two combat points. There you go. Is that all right? Master Builder is still in my... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. My Master Builder, therefore, is actually still there. Okay, there you go. Right, thank you for that. More cheating. Yes. Oh, it's going to be completely cheating. Basically cheating the whole game. Um, cheating and undoing, and then cheating again. Right, I think we're done. I refresh my hand. Now, do I want specific cards? Um, so if I'm going to be going to Maracaibo next, I need some sugar. There is sugar in the display, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the first one. If you're allowed to do this, I'm going to draw the first one. It is sugar. That's fine. I was going to draw two, and then if I didn't draw sugar, I was going to spend a coin to buy that. So I've drawn that one, which is sugar. That's okay. I'm drawing that one. It's an erect fort and a harbour. Right, so I've drawn back up to my hand size. And that is my go done. I think. It actually seems really simple once you start playing it. Um, right, Gene. Gene is moving one. So again, we're not counting villages with quests. So Gene goes to Maracaibo. This is where I was going to go. Hi, Tony's here. Hi, Tony. Thank you very much for dropping in. Tony is the, one of the CGE people in America. So, yeah, good to, good to see you, Tony. Um, right. Uh, so, quest, no quest. Right. So, city. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to do that. Uh, there's only one. Rats. Beat me to it. Pesky Jean. Uh, and then there is an icon. Right, so, so let's follow the icon. Uh, this is... Solo play, special combat action? Yes, so Gene performs a special combat action. One, reveal a combat token. Yeah, is that what we're doing? I think we are because there's there's the icon of the flags on there. But yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Dean's galleon has a large outboard motor. Yes, <laughs> she does. Oh, Ian's here as well. Have you missed much? Me fumbling around with the rules. So you've missed the worst part of the stream. But now we should be good to go from now on. So there's the combat token. Right. Two. Determine the modified combat value of each nation. For each nation, first add Jean's noble rank with that nation. no idea um to the combat value indicated by the combat token oh noble rank is this that rings a bell so she has nothing she has no noble rank with any of the nations um to the combat value indicated by the token which i think is on the right hand side yeah so it's three four and two subtract your noble rank with that nation. Zero. Okay. Noble ranks are the last red band you or Gene reached on the corresponding influence track. Yep. Okay. If the combat token shows a requirement that modifies a nation's combat value, then apply it. Uh, don't think so. I can't quite remember this bit. Gene ignores any cost or immediate bonuses on the combat token. In case of a tie, Gene chooses the nation with the highest combat value on the combat token. What does it mean in case of a tie?
Oh, in case of a tie, it uses uh, French, the Spanish, and the English. So is it always that, French, Spanish, English? But according to this, the Spanish are four. I, don't, I, I can't remember what's at the top. Top of the tile could have a modifier. It says three cubes plus three. That's not three cubes, is it? <clears throat> but there's no, there's no modifier because each of the nations has one cube on the board. So I don't think there's any modifier. I think that means the one who is in the third place gets an extra bonus. So I think we're just looking at the three, four, two. I'll just show you the token for those who, who want to see it. So that is the token. Focuses, yeah, that's the token. So I think she's going to ba basically go for the Spanish. Yeah, I think that's the Spanish. Okay, so. So it's not a tie. Well, it says in case of a tie, Jean chooses the nation with the highest combat value on the combat token. Oh, right. Okay. So if there was, after you've applied the modifiers, if there was a tie, would go for that one. And if there's still a tie, it's France, Spain, and England. Right. Jean now annexes the lowest numbered empty city without receiving the reward shown. Oh, that's this one. With the Spanish, presumably. So that goes on there, and she doesn't get the reward. If there aren't any empty cities, she annexes the lowest numbered empty village. If there aren't any of those, she removes the ownership marker from the game. The ownership marker. I don't know what the ownership marker is. For Automa Card Warrior, annex an additional empty. It's not Warrior, is it? Finally, Jean gains the rewards indicated by the Automa Card. Either two influence with the nation she fought in, or three influence with the nation she fought in, and two victory points. That says two influence for the nation that she fought in. Right. Am I doing this right? I think I am. Yeah, I think I've done that right. The ownership marker is the cube. Oh, so this one, you actually take it and you, you, you remove it from the game. Right, okay, gotcha. So is that right? Did I do it right? It will choose the Spanish. The nation with the least cubes gets plus three to its fight. Yeah, I thought so. Um, but because everybody's got... Yeah, it isn't as, co as complex as it looks. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Certainly once you get going, um, my second game of this is going to absolutely flow perfectly. You're doing it in a breeze. Simples. Right. I think that's it. I think that is Gene done. So it's back to me. Now, I was going to go to Maracaibo, and I was going to do exactly that, and I was going to get the four coins. Scuppered. I think the term is. Um, yeah. Scuppered. Now she's going to go here. She's going to try and do this quest before me. I, I don't want her to do that quest before me. I want to do that quest. She might go that way around though. Now I'm still here, so I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could I could go seven, and and get to this story point before she does. But I don't think. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Oh, where does this combat tile go? I guess there. Um, yeah, I don't think it's the right thing to do, but I kind of do want to do the story thing before she does, and then next round go straight there. To that one. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I can still go to Maracaibo. Yeah, I know I can go to Maracaibo and I get to do this. I'm just worried that she's going to move to there next turn. So I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to go and save Gloria. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so I've arrived there. I could do three village actions, but I'm not. I'm going to fulfill the quest. So this is a quest marker. It's a story quest marker. I need one sword. So I give up one combat value and I get five money. Here's the money. Um, and I get one point for every compass. I don't have any compasses. And then I get the story tile. Which goes here, I think. Is that how that works? 
think so. Let's have a look at story tiles. Uh, and I need quests for my thing anyway. So, yeah, is that right? Have I done that right? Quests. Questy quests quests. Fulfilling a quest story tile. To fulfill that quest, your ship must be in a location with the story tile. You must pay the cost. Take the story tile and add it to your shipboard in the same way as you would for a quest tile. The countless quests in all ways. Um, and then do you reveal the next card? That, that's the question. Do I reveal the next card? I think I do. But I can't find where that's written. Story cards, story cards. I think you like flip it over and read the next bit of the story or something like that. At the end of the round. Okay, right, thank you. It's obviously somewhere at the end of the round. Right. Uh, that's me done. I now redraw, but I've got four cards, so I don't draw any more. That's me done. Right. She's moving two, and she's going top way around. So she wouldn't have gone anyway, so we don't count that space. We do count that space. That's one. We don't count there. We don't count there. We don't count there, but we do count there. Wow. Super zooming ahead. Okay, so she's gone there. Uh, fulfill a quest if there was a quest. No, but there is a city. There isn't a city. There isn't somewhere where she can put a thing. So it's take a card and it's take the first card uh, and it, it goes face down here, I think. And then you refill. Again, the chat will shout at me if I'm wrong, and then gains one influence with the Spanish. Yeah, and I think that's it. Compass reward. Oh, do I have a compass on my ship? Oh, yeah, you do. You start with a compass. So what did I get? I got a point. Hey, <laughs> thank you. I forgot you sh your ship starts with one compass. Yeah. And what's this? Assistant, no entry, two points. Don't know what that is. Yeah, I can't remember what that is and I can't remember what that means. Yeah, it's like a permanent ability that is an assistant. Yeah, not sure. And yeah, Stephen, if one of your players ended around in three turns, you'd be starting having series. I tried that. I played one game of this where I rushed up to the end uh, and it, it did annoy the other players, but I wanted to try it as a strategy uh, and it didn't work. It, it really didn't work. Okay, so my go, I'm, I'm tempted to go here and do this quest because I require one combat point. I have a compass, so I get two money. Uh, and I also put two discs. I, I remove two discs from my board. So I'm going to remove that one. So that's that ability now unlocked. There you go. You don't use the assistant. If you go by, you get two victory points. Ah, oh, yeah, thank you very much. That was it. If you go past one of your assistants and don't use it, you get two points. Yeah, I'd forgotten that rule completely. Um, number of ship upgrades. How many of those have I got? I, I've got one upgrade at the moment. And I need to move on the Explorer track. Yeah. Is there anything on here that boosts my exploration? Because that. Hmm. There's also money. I could get money for taking that. I think I'm going to need more combat points. I quite like that upgrade. But I also like this upgrade as well. I'm going to go for this one. Okay, because this is a series of ones that you have to do them in order. So I'm going to do that one. Um, right. 
Done, got the quest. So I have actually done two quests. So if I wanted to, I could take this worker now and get two coins. But if I waited until I had three of them, I could get two coins and two victory points. This is a really interesting idea. It was done in Blackout Hong Kong as well, but um, the fact that you, you could achieve it now or you can wait and try and achieve it a bit more. So yeah, I think I'm gonna wait. Now, what does Jean do on the homeward bound spaces? I guess still draws a card. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we're gonna draw a card, but it kind of doesn't matter the movement because he moves one to there. Uh, and then it's that, it takes card number three and gets one influence in England. Okay, two cards under there. We get a new one and one influence in England. Is that, is that right? Is that how Gene works? And then do I now get just one more turn? Wow. Homeward bound. Uh, second homeward bound space. Yeah, three victory points. Form interim scoring you can see below at the end of your turn during rounds one to three. Oh, is that it? Round is over. Isn't that an illegal upgrade? Oh, you're right. I can't take that until I've had four other upgrades. Well spotted. Well spotted. Thank you, Gert. So we'll go for... I don't know. I'll go for that one. Okay, there you go. So the round's over. Wow. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Right. Interim scoring. I thought at least all players would have another turn, but no. So starting with the player who triggered the interim scoring, each player in clockwise order chooses one of the followings. Choose one of your project cards, either in your hand or your planning area, and buy it. Okay, this is printed on here. Yeah, so everybody can buy a card. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can take two points. Um, or you could invest in a prestige building. Now, I, I don't have the money for a prestige building. I do have cards in hand. I don't quite have enough to build a harbour. And these cards now don't combo together. So, I could erect a fort. Or I could play the quest hunter. Now, I was going to play the quest hunter because it gives me the compass. Um, and I was going to use that for something. What was I going to use that for? I was going to use that to combo with something else. Um, and I've got I've got this and I've got this synergy token now, but nothing nothing to do with it. I need that card. That's the card I need. Yeah, I totally should have bought that one. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm going to buy this card. I think I'm going to buy the Quest Hunter. So it cost me seven. I think I gain a worker. Not spend a worker, it's gain a worker. Okay. Uh, and I've got an extra compass. And my income goes up by two. And if I had one of those synergy tokens, it would go up by another two. If you can play a card that will give you an extra income, do it now. Buy the quest hunter. Yes, there you go. People are saying quest hunter. It's good. Right. Um, so I've done that. Place the card in your display. Redraw cards as in phase C. Did I pay for it? I did. So I'm going to redraw cards. And I am going to pay one to draw the conquer village. Because I want the synergy, bo the, the synergy bonuses work with what I've got. So I'm going to take that. Okay, it's another quest hunter. This is a great game. I love this game. Uh, then receive income. So I get 10 money. Oh, loads of money. Uh, and no points. Okay. Remove all delivered goods. Discard all face-up cards in the display and draw four new ones. 
It's a good job I bought that one when I did. Oh, major harbour. Um, reveal the next face down prestige building, but we've revealed them all. Not that I've even looked at them. <laughs> and check to see if the current story cards requirements have been fulfilled. Yes, they, yes, they have. If there are multiple cards in play, check them all. Most of the time, a story's card requirements are fulfilled when a player has claimed the corresponding story tile. The player who fulfilled the requirements reads the reverse side of the card out loud. Right, we're we sitting comfortably again. Uh, all the stuff in the top left is a cost, so you pay a worker. Oh, right, okay. Thank you. Right, thank you very much for that. Okay, chapter one. Gloria thanks you for your help and agrees to accompany you. Read card two. Gloria knows a doctor who might be able to fight the plague. His name is Edward. Bring him healing herbs. Okay, so we need to put story token number two in location 10 in Caracas. So that is where Edward is. And we have a quest token on 12. I'm taking from here and then moving the cube to there. So we have a quest token on 12 in Santa Marta. Um, if there's one to four players, and also in 15 if four players. Right, and we need to add. Cards 90 and 91 to the discard pile. Okay, so let's go through these cards here. These are the story cards. So 90 and 91, which is Dr. Edward and Gloria, uh, they get added to the discard pile. So they are going to cycle round uh, the more we play the game. Those two characters have now entered the game. And the story is, thematically, this works, you've got to bring two herbs. Now, I mentioned that... Um, again, for those people who don't know, but it seems everybody in the chat, most of you do know the game. Uh, but I did mention that all of the cards in the game have two icons on the left hand side. Uh, there is the resource that you use when you're trading with the cities. But below that is another type of resource, which is either uh, herbs, a map, or I believe a telescope or something like that. Uh, it's another type of icon, and that is used for fulfilling the quests. Books. There's books, there's maps, uh, there's herbs, and there's. Um, telescopes as well. So basically to complete this quest I need to visit Caracas, see Dr. Edward and give him two herbs. I do have two herbs in hand. It's a harbour and an erect fort. So if I didn't want those cards I could use them for that. Right there you go. Did the card tell you to add a card to the discard pile? Yes cards 90 and 91 which, which I've done. That was Dr. Edward and Gloria. Okay right. If you're not playing the campaign, and then return all ships to Havana. After completing these steps, start the next round. Now, we just need to check the solo rules to see what Gloria does in the, um, yeah, at the end of the round. Nothing. Oh, during income, Jen scores victory points equal to the highest value empty space on the Automa board. One plus one victory point per card next to the board. Ah, that's these. So she scores three points. One, two, three. I think that's right. One for that, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I've got that right. Uh, Yes, there are a handful of cards from the mini expansion. There's like 12 cards in the game from the mini expansion. So, yeah, you're going to see them. Next round, who goes first? Is it me? I mean, it's got to be me, hasn't it? Because Glory, uh, Gloria, uh, Jean finished the round, so it's my go. Okay. What's our plan? <laughs> Um, we can't really visit our smuggler friend because we need to keep the cards for that. Uh, I mean, we could go to Santiago again. We, we do have. Oh no, we've got this Conquer Village. We needed that. This is the card we want to play. We could just move two spaces and get two village actions. And I could play this Conquer Village card. 
which is awesome. I think I might do it. Do I want to move five for three village actions? One, two, three, four, five. Hey, what? We could. In fact, I could go. Uh, yeah, we could just go five. Go five and get three village actions. Why wouldn't we? Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I have moved to San Juan, which is under the control of the Spanish at the moment. Um, and because I've moved five and I've unlocked this ability, I get to do three village actions. Do I have corn or tobacco? I, I have tobacco. Move to four, get one influence and buy the card. Oh, there's a village action there. Ah, but I don't have corn. No, I don't have corn. Yeah, I have tobacco, but I don't have corn. So yeah, that, that would be nice. So no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this plan. So I've moved five. Because of this ability, I have three, three actions. Um, my first action is to take a money using the take a money action. My second action is to take a money and my third action is to conquer a village. So that cost me 16. Right, I get this synergy token, which immediately increases my income by another two. Uh, and my income goes up by another four because I have that synergy token. And I get to place a cube without reward, any ownership marker in a free village without an ownership marker. So I can basically increase the value of one of these countries. So I'm going to increase the French, the value of the French, because Jean hasn't got any influence in the French. And I put this in a free village that doesn't have an ownership marker. I don't think this really matters where it goes. So we'll go there. The French have conquered there. It's your victory point income track. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, that's even better. Yep, that's victory point income. That's money income. Thank you for that. Spotted it. Right. Oh, you can still do that without the corn. Yeah, I forgot. Sorry, I could have still done that. I could have moved four and I could have gone there. Never mind, I've done that now. Um, yeah, so I moved five. I did three village actions, which was what? Get money, get money. Play a card. Or did I? Yeah, get money, get money, play a card. Um, and now it is draw up. Now, I've got me two herbs. Is there anything I want here? I don't, I don't think there is. Uh, and money is so short at the moment. I think I'm just going to... Although the Pioneer is quite good. Because every time I move my Explorer, I move it an extra one. Okay, I might draw that up in a minute. How do you get extra workers? Oh, here. Yeah, so I need to do ship upgrades and I need to do quests. Oh, this is an awesome game. This is such a good game. Oh, Governor, take a synergy token you don't own yet. Right, okay. <laughs> Cost 20. Yeah, right. Okay, Gene. We're on to Gene. Uh, two and moving around the bottom. So we do count that space. We do not count that space, but we do count that space. Uh, quest, no city. Yes, so she puts that on there. And then it is... Take a quest from the draw pile and three points. So one, two, three. She gets this quest. You move to there, uh, and that just goes there as a completed quest. I needed two village actions. Yeah, yeah, I, got, I, I had three actions, two to take money, and one to buy the card. Okay, that's Gene done. My go. We're not... Oh! Ah, now! Oh, I tell you what. I could use the smuggler, because I now have... Three identical goods. Y 
Yeah, and I will just buy two more cards from the display to give me the herbs that I need. Okay, so let's do it. Let's move one. Let's move to St. Kitts. Let's visit my smuggler. And let's discard three identical... Now, ah, no, goods. Goods, goods, goods. Not... Goods is the top one, isn't it? Let me just check that. I need to get the terminology right in this game. I think what's at the top is a good, and what's below it is something else. Let me just have a look at the cards. Yeah, goods is the top bit. What's the thing at the bottom? Somebody tell me. Did I draw it to my hand size? Yes, my hand size is four. What's the thing on the bottom of the left side of the card called? Because I don't think it's a good. I think it is. Object. That's it. Right. So I, I, I can't visit the smuggler because I do not have three goods the same. Okay. Almost cheated there, but didn't. So we're going we're gonna to go to the quest tile. We're going to go one, one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm staying ahead of Jean this turn. So four, and we are going to bring two herbs. So we're, it's going to be the harbour and the governor. So they, they, the two herbs on them. So they get discarded. Uh, and I get all of this. So I get two coins. Um, I get influence with a nation of my choice. Well, I'm going to go for the French. Uh, I get two money for every compass I have. I now have two compasses. So that's four money. And I get the story tile. Okay, story tile, which is a third quest. So because I've done three quests, I am now going to take that worker off and I get two money and two points. Two money and two points. There you go. I think that's right. And that is now done. Story card is done. So at the end of the round, the story is going to progress. I redraw up to my hand size. Now at this point, uh, if I'm going to go to Maracaibo next, I do have the sugar. Um, so. And is it a card that I particularly want? No. So I'm going to ditch the... Sugar from the Sailor card at Maracaibo. I've got these other quests. These other quests are quite good as well, but... Yeah, because these quests are going to get me points at the end of the game. Uh, I need to be upgrading and I need to be doing the exploring. That's what I need to be doing next. Exploring is here in Port Royal. So we could do that. We could go to St Maracaibo first and then go to Port Royal. And then try and get to the end and get more exploring. So I'm going to take one of the pioneers at least. Let's, let's draw a card first. Oh, I didn't get my two points for passing the assistant. You're right. Thank you. After you reminded me, that's what that rule was. So I'm going to draw a card at random first. It's an expedition. Well, I don't think I've seen that card before. It's not from an expansion, though. I don't think it is. It costs 13 and two workers. Wow. Okay, and then I'm going to take a Pioneer. Vice Admiral has come in. There's so many different cards in this game. It's fantastic. There's so much. I know when this game came out and it was priced at like 70 euros at Essen and people were like, wow, games are really expensive these days. But the amount of content and variability you get in this game is... Yeah, and then the, the campaign mode on top of it. Yeah, it's why it's one of my favourite games of 2019. And it's probably... It's probably in my top 20 games of all time. Yeah, it'd be strange if it wasn't. So, we're done. What's Jean doing? Jean is moving one. So she, Jean's going slow this turn. So we don't count that. We don't count that. We don't count that. We don't count that. We don't, oh, she's gone to Maracaibo before me. I should have seen that coming. In fact, it was obvious because 
there wasn't anything else to do along here. Okay, so Jean goes to Maracaibo, puts this car, puts that token on there, and gains one influence in France. There you go. Done. Simple. Got to spend a doubloon for the Pioneer. Yeah, you're right. I've cheated again. Thank you. Right, that's Jean done. So it's me. So I've missed out on, on that. So do I want to bother fighting or should I just go to Port Royal first? I kind of want to play the Pioneer first. So I think I might just move two. I don't have the two books to do this quest, which is a shame. But two is two actions. And I do have eight money. And that would mean my explorer would then start moving three a time instead of only two. I quite like that. Yeah, what other cards have we got? We've got the Sailor. Yeah, and we've got the Erect Fort. Yeah. We could also play the Master Builder. The, the Master Builder is still here, giving me a discount on all future cards. How do you get more cards into this area? I thought there was some way. And I'm, am I doing this wrong? Yeah, I think there's a rule that I'm missing. I think at the end of your turn, you can put cards into your planning area. Yeah, free action. Take one of your cards in your hand and add it to the planning area. If all three spaces are filled, you're not allowed to do it. Right, okay, so yeah, it's a free action. I've not been doing it. I had forgotten about that. It's a good way of saying, look, I want to build this card at some point in the game. And I'm not going to use it for its um, goods or objects. Therefore, I'm going to put it in my planning area. It's kind of like a secondary hand. It's a really, really cool mechanism. Um, Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put that right in there into my planning area because I'm going to be building that at some point. I am going to move two. Uh, and I should have done that last turn, actually, because then I could have completed the quest. Anyway, I've moved two. I get to do two actions. The first action is to build the Master Builder. No, it's to build the Pioneer. What was the point of me putting it there? I'm just not going to bother with this Master Builder now. Well, that cost me seven. Um, and I get two additional income. And my second village action is going to be just to gain a coin. Oh no, I could discard all my cards for two coins. Do I want any of these? I don't. Right, so I'm going to discard all my cards for two coins. There you go. Right. And then we're going to draw up. Um, right, is there anything up there that I want? looking i could take another pioneer yeah i'll take it so i'll spend one to take a pine oh well i'll draw three cards first and see what we get oh and a figure thank you yep you have to spend a figure to play the pioneer so i get a historian a mercenary a pinnace and then i'm going to spend one to take the other pioneer Okay, so that is my new hand of cards. Jeans go. Oh, replenish that with the innkeeper. Jeans go. Moves one. Ah, so Jean moves to Santa Maria. So this is a new thing we haven't seen. She's moved to a village. There is a quest. She takes the quest. If you can reach a quest, move to... Yeah. So there you go. I think she just takes the quest and it goes on there. And that's that done. Yeah, nice and simple. Right, my go. Uh, I think I'm going to go to Port Royal. And I'm going to... I'm going to use the Historian as a corn. And I'm going to take that off there. And put it on there, which has unlocked this, which is an immediate one-off bonus of five coins. Um... 
Uh, yes, when you're exploring, you jump over other explorers. Thank you, Kenneth. I, I, I was going to check that because I, I had that in my mind. So two exploration points plus one. So I've got three exploration points. And as Kenneth quite rightly says, you jump over other people. So one, two, three. Ooh, that allows me to put a disc onto the board. So I have unlocked two upgrades so far. Um, so I'm going to take this one off. Okay. Done that, done that, done that, done that. Draw back up to my hand size. Yeah, what do we want? Uh, I'm just going to take one from the top of the deck. It is another mercenary. Right, Gene, no cards left in the deck. So we give him a shuffle. I'm feeling I'm much more under control this round. Gene just rushed ahead last time and yeah. How much exploration does Jean have in her deck? I do not know. Not a lot, it seems. Uh, right, adventurer. So where is she? She's in Santa Maria. She's moving two spaces and going round the bottom. So it's one. Oh, not again. <laughs> yeah, skips all of this and goes to here. Okay. So there's no quest there. Can't put anything on the city. Takes card number two. And then takes a quest from the draw pile and gets three points. So one, two, three. Takes a quest. Puts it on there. Move the cube to the Okay. So replenish that. So this is my last turn again. Uh, well, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go exploring. Yeah. So we're going to skip all of this. We're going to go there. And we're going to get two exploration points, which is actually three because of the pioneer. Um, so we're going to cross a boundary. Now, do I have two maps? I don't have two maps. So I go one, two, three. Now, do you get it for every space you pass through or just where you land on? I can't remember this. It's been a, such a long time since the data exploration. I think it's probably where you land on. Yeah, you don't have to move the entire amount. After finishing your movement, you get the reward where you landed. You don't get anything for what you moved through. If you end your movement on a space with a quest, you can immediately fulfill it. And if you pass through the red barrier, you get three influence with the nation of your choice. You cannot split it. There should be an equals two sign on there then. Um, and then the first player to cross the blue barrier and the foot, right, okay. So I've landed on this space. I get one coin. Oh, that's a bit rubbish. Could have done with one more movement. Yeah, so I get one coin, but I'm going to get three influence with the French. One, two, three. There you go. Yeah, where you land, you can move less. Thought so. Ah, oh, such a waste because that would have been. I can't like use my solar panels to get one extra movement, like in Cloud Age. That does, doesn't fit, does it? Um, that's me done. Yeah, I did that, I did that. I didn't use any cards. Oh, I can play some cards. Do I want to play another Pioneer? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, it's actually a better Pioneer. It's one that combos better with my Synergy tokens. So I'm going to put that into my planning area. Um, and I'm also going to put this into my planning area, the, the Pinnace. Which means I draw two new cards. Is there anything up there that I want? And I need to be, I need to be looking at these as well. So I, the Abbey, definitely interested in that. Also in, interested in the Minster, since I've got two and I'm going to get a third one. In fact, I'm interested in all of those. <laughs> I can't get them all though. Um, can't do the Explorer Trike yet. Haven't done the ship upgrade yet. I'm just going to take two cards from the deck. We've drawn a Privateer Raid and a Governor. 
But ooh, that's quite nice. Yeah, I like the fact that some of these cards have different costs, uh, like, you know, swords and things like that. Andrea's here. Hi, Andrea. The Simply Red Barrier. Yeah, reference to what I said earlier on. <laughs> Good reference. I like that. I like that, Matthew. Uh, you don't have to move past the quest. Oh, here. Yeah, I didn't have to. I could have stayed there if I wanted to, but I'm going to try and push ahead as far as I can. Right, so on Jean's go, it, you just draw the card and she just moves to there and then does all of this, which is remove the third card. She's got another card. Um, one influence with the English. And replenish. OK, interim scoring. So first of all, I can buy a card. So I'm going to buy this Pioneer. So it's my second Pioneer. Um, so I'm going to stack them. OK, that cost me seven money. And a worker. I remembered this time. Uh, but it increases my income by four. OK, two normally and an extra two because I've got this synergy token. All right, so I've done that. Now we get income. So I get 18 money and four points. And 18 money. Rolling in. Yeah, you can't stop on a quest and fulfill it later. Yeah. Oh, is that a cat? That's a cat. Hello, Loki. Is it TV time? Come on. Have you seen what I'm playing today? I'm playing Maracaibo, your favourite game. Oh, hello, you. Mr. Wrigley, yeah, look. Oh, now, are you going to destroy everything? OK, almost destroyed everything. <laughs> so many pieces. There we go. Right, um, cat invasion. Where were we? I've done my points, I've done my money. What's that? Oh, yeah, that is clear these. OK, that's them cleared. Uh, wipe the cards. Yeah, so this actually cycles them around. Although there's a huge number of cards in this deck, they're not going to cycle around that quick at all. Uh, done that, done that. Reveal the next one of those, which we've done. Read the story card. Dr. Edward, you tell the doctor about the plague. He says, I must examine the corpses, but first we should really visit the loan shark and settle my debts. Choose as a group. That's me and you, Loki. We're making a decision, OK? We can either... No, I'm going to make this interactive. So it's for you in the chat. Another pioneer, yes. Uh, black pirate cat. <laughs> so we're going to choose as a group. Do we want to visit the loan shark or focus on flight flighting, fighting the plague? Um, it's up to you in the chat. We'll make it interactive. Um, so what do you want to do? Visit the loan shark. If you want me to do that, put the word shark in the chat. Or focus on fighting the plague. If you want me to do that, put the word plague in the chat. So the two options are shark or plague. Uh, decide what you want to do. And I am going to just get a glass of water. I hadn't realised there was actually going to be story choices in the game, but it's good because then we can make it a bit interactive. So what have we got? We have plague, shark, plague, shark, 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 shark and shark. OK, so it looks like seven votes for the shark and two votes for the plague. OK, so we're going to go with visiting the lone shark. So we're going to read card number three. So this is interesting. This means the campaign campaign is actually a little bit replayable in that the next time you play it, you could choose something else. So yeah, we're going to visit the Lone Shark. Read card number three. All right, card number three. You visit the Lone Shark first. Edward says, if you want my help, you'll have to settle my debts. So we need a story tile on eight. So story tile number three goes in Martinique. Uh, we need a quest on 18. 
there is a quest there. Uh, and another one if there was three to four players, and another one if there was four players. And then read five. Okay, so we put this in play. So we need to go to the loan shark. We need to give him two money. So he only owes two money. That's <laughs> not a lot. Um, but we get a worker, three combat, loads of points, and a story card. Right. And we read card five. Card five. Many of the city's inhabitants want to flee Puerto Cabezas and escape the plague. Bring them there. Right. Place this card next to the new story card and add tile L10 to the game. Okay, so you're going to see a part of the game we've not seen before, and that is the legacy tiles. There is a big pack of legacy tiles here. These are going to change the, the board as the game goes on. We need L10. Okay, so this is a replacement for here. So this goes over the board. This is really cool. Uh, yeah, more games should do this. Place this card next to the new story card. So here. Uh, rule, if you end your movement here, then before your main action, you can move one of your discs from the ship onto the tile. Once the tile is full, read the reverse of this card at the end of the round. Okay, now what does the tick mean? Does it just mean it has to be full? I vaguely remember L10 has special rules for one player. Thank you, Andrew. That's the bit that I remember, because I have actually played this scenario once before, and I remember getting very confused at this point. Legacy tiles, solo rules, L10. L10. Here we go. Is this in the back of the rule book? These tiles are added to the various corresponding locations. If your ship ends... Yeah. Perform your main action as usual. These spaces... Right, okay. Where is it? In the solo rules. Flippity flip. L10. When one of these tiles enters the game, in addition to the two-player rule... Okay. <laughs> Wherever the two-player rule is. L11 to L17. Place a disc on the legacy tile. Then take another disc from the box and add it to the tile occupying another space. Okay so, uh, okay, so that's a bit weird. It says L10 to L17, when one of these tiles enters the game, in addition to the two-player rule, brackets, da 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 okay, take another disc from the box and add it to the tile occupying another space. So, in other words, are we saying that one of them's already done? I think that's what we're saying. Don't forget to give uh, them the points. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I did forget to do that. Um, we got three. One, two, three, four. So seven points. Seven points for Jean. Uh, I need a better way of tracking this number of cards because that's a bit, a bit messy. I might get a dice next time. There you go. Four cards. Okay. So yeah, I think that's right, and I think one disc already goes on there. So L10 to L17 have spaces for discs, but you do not place a disc on L10. But it, it says I do. It says, when one of these tiles enters the game, in addition to the two-player rule, take another disc from the box and add it to the tile occupying another space. So, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know what the two-player rule is. I don't know where that is mentioned. And I say, this is, this is why I got a bit confused last time, and I think I've got confused again this time. But I think that's right. Take a disc from the supply onto the tile. The tick must be filled. Okay, so we'll put it there. Uh, L10 has two player rules that says you put a disc on it. L17 to L17, you put two. Okay, thank you, Andrew. So one disc on L10. But if it was L11 to L17, it would be two discs. But Rene is saying you only place a disc on L11 to L17. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's not what it says. And this actually works. 
this this actually makes more sense because delivering two things in a solo game is very very difficult i'm just going to have a look at l11 to see what it's what it's like so that's l11 so yeah i don't know where's the where's the two player rule because it says in addition to the two player rule take another disc from yeah okay i i think you do i i, I think you do I did do a solo playthrough of Cooper Island. Yeah, that's on the channel if you're interested in Cooper Island. I've done a solo playthrough and I think I've done a multiplayer playthrough as well. I think so. Cooper Island was one of my favourite games of 2019 as well. Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure about this bit. So Rene's looking it up. Thank you, Rene, for checking. But I think in a solo game, you put one disc on. In the other ones, in a solo game, you put two discs on. So I, I think I think L11, in a two-player game, you put one disc on. In a solo game, you put another disc on. Whereas L10, you just put one disc on in the solo game. I think that's what that means. So I think we're good. I think we are good. So we've got that. So we've got two, two little quests now. We've got this one. We've got the story. We've got to go to the Lone Shark and pay him off. And we need to be bringing um, plague victims to here. Yeah, bring them here. Many of the city's inhabitants want to flee to Porto Cabezas and escape the plague. So we're taking them from Portobello and we're taking them to Porto Cabezas. I think that's right. In a solo game, you put another on, but not on L10. Yes, so I think, that, I think that's right. Paul is correct. Excellent. Right, so one... In a solo game, it's one disc on L10, two discs on L11 to L17. It's just, yeah, it's weird, weirdly worded, obviously, because it, it's confusing many of us. So, right, we're, we're done with round three. Now, who ended the round? Uh, that was Jean again. So it's me. Right, now, we have a plan now, and it is to go exploring lots, because we've got that, and to play this. How are we doing for money? We're all right for money, but we do want to be accomplishing these. And I need to be doing more ship upgrades. How do I do ship upgrades? I need to get discs off the board. And getting discs off the board is by delivering stuff. So, we have this privateer raid. And I, I have these. Presumably I can get these back now. Now that I've, I've spent them, I can get them back. So, yeah, this is what we're going to do. We are going to just move one. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like moving one. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, yeah. I'm just looking at whether I should be going here instead. Because that allows me to do an action. Do I, do I even want to play a card at the moment? Do we want to play this? Where's my compasses? I have one, two, so that's okay. Can I get any more compasses? Can I get a governor? This is round three, isn't it? There's two rounds left after this. We need money to go here. We could just go here straight away. We could just skip all of this. My, my worry is that Jean moves two and she's going to go there and there. She's not going to get here before me unless her card is a move three. You need a worker for the card, you can't buy it. Yes, you're right. Because I don't have any workers at the moment, so I can't buy, I can't buy a mercenary. That's fine. I wasn't, I wasn't planning on buying one of those. Uh, I could buy this one. That doesn't need a worker either. So many choices. So many choices. There's another pioneer up there. <laughs> could go for a third pioneer. So it's either Santiago or Puerto Plata. Uh, 
Uh, I think we're going to go with Porto Plata. And we need to get more French on the board. Because at the moment, the points for these are pretty much insignificant. Um, yeah, because I'm not really doing the whole combat thing. I'm kind of focusing on doing these quests. Okay, I'm going to go... Can I still go? One, two, three. Yeah, I'm going to go to Santiago. Uh, and I'm going to play this card for the tobacco. And I'm going to unlock that ability. So that is my third ship upgrade. Okay, so I've got three ship upgrades so far. That goes on there. I get a worker. And I can perform an, a village action. And the village action I'm going to perform is... It's just one village action. I could discard my entire hand to take two coins. Or I could take a coin and a combat point. Do I really need these cards? No, I don't want these cards. So I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to cycle my hand. So there you go. Thrown away all my cards for two points. Uh, for two coins. Um, right, and then I refresh my hand. Now, is there any of those that I want up there? Yeah, there's the Pioneer. We could just go absolutely crazy with the Pioneer. So I'm going to draw three. We've drawn a Quest Hunter, Jacquelt de la Haye, and another Conquer Village. Which is quite nice, especially when I buy a Synergy Token. And then we're going to pay a coin to buy the Pioneer. Okay. Done. Oh, Explorer. Oh. That's me done. Right, Jean. Moves one, go around to the bottom. But actually, Jean just goes here. So Jean goes there with me. Uh, can put a disc onto the board. So does. And then we're doing combat. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be a bit more, a bit more complicated than last time. So we're going to draw this. I'm going to show you what we've got. So that's the tile we've got. Come on, you know you want to focus. There you go. Right, so whoever is in third position on the board, which is the English, because we have two French, two Spanish and one English, so whoever is the English, so whoever is the third, uh, gets an extra three. So according to this, the English have got seven, the Spanish have got three, and the French have got two, I think. I can buy a prestige card as well. Um, I thought you could only buy a prestige card here. Oh no, that's reveal a prestige card. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I could have done that, but I didn't quite have enough money. So I'm going to reread the solo rules for this combat bit because I didn't fully understand it last time. Determine the modified combat value for each nation. For each nation, add Jean's noble rank with that nation to the combat value indicated by the combat token and then subtract yours. Noble ranks are the last red band you or Jen reach. So let's look at the English because I think the English is seven plus one, minus zero. So English is eight, Spanish is uh, three, four, five. Are we looking at the number? Are we looking at the noble rank? The last red band, oh yeah, so it's actually, yeah, so it's three there. So the Spanish is three, four, five, six. But the English was eight, Spanish is six, French is actually two, three, zero. So I think it's the English. French has one. Uh, yeah, so two plus one minus three. No, I think the French have got zero. Spanish five, did I get Spanish five? Yeah, I think Spanish is six, because I think you, it's the second band Depends on the definition of the noble rank. 
Noble ranks are the last red band you or Jean reached on the influence track. So I think this second band is three, not two. I don't, I don't know where that is in the rules. Uh, it'll probably be under the end game scoring. Well, no, because the end game scoring, you, use the mul you definitely use the multiply for the end game scoring. But I think the noble rank is printed at the top. Um, so noble rank goes from one to three. I think. Number of banners. Oh, it's the second banner. Right, okay. Everybody's telling me otherwise. Right, thank you. So, yeah. So, Spain is two plus one, three, minus two, one. Sorry, France. Spain is three, four, five. Well, English is four plus the three for the tile, seven, eight. Yeah, there we go. The simply red banner. Yes, the, the banner that is simply red. Um, so it's the English, right? Okay, tie blah 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 blah, and then the English are going to put a cube on the board. So it goes in the lowest numbered city, unless all of the cities are occupied. So it goes here. There you go, and then get two influence with the English. One, two. Okay, done. That's actually quite simple. It just took me a while to, to figure it out. That goes on there. Uh, I think we're done. My go. I'm going to Martinique, aren't I? Is that, is that the plan? Yeah, because I need to get there before she does. So, one, two, three, four, five. I passed my assistant and didn't use them. So two points. So I've landed here and I'm going to do the story. So I give two coins to the loan shark. And I get a worker. I get three combat value. I get two points because I've got, no, yeah, two compasses. So I get two points. Uh, and I get the story tile. Ching. Right, nice. Um, but I definitely want the palace because the palace at the end of the game is two points per quest. That's going to be eight points. Yeah, that's the best one for me at the moment is the palace. Uh, that's it. I read, oh, I could put cards into play if I wanted to. Yeah, I'm going to put the Pioneer into play because I'm definitely going to be buying that. Uh, which means I get to draw a card. Um, are we going to be going to Maracaibo next? I mean, we might. We've not really done that much, have we? So I'm just going to draw a card. Oh, the chat's dead. Give us a second. I will reset that. I really do hope they fix this at some point. But XSplit are blaming YouTube. Um, where's the chat gone? There's the chat. And refresh. And the chat is back. You have to pay to pick up the quest. Yeah, I did. I paid two coins. Plus the three VP for the quest art. Oh, do I get that immediately? Oh, yeah, I do. I wasn't sure if that was end of the game or not. But you're right, it's in the same coloured banner as everything else. So, yeah, straight away. Uh, yeah, we're done. Jeans go. Moving two, round the top. But ignores that, ignores that, goes there. Ignores that, ignores that, ignores that. She's done it again. Got to Maracaibo before me. Yeah. Ah, pesky Jean. So that comes off and goes on there. And then Jean does this, which is four points. One, two, three, four. I was catching up. Um, and round three and four, four explanation. Exploration, exploration. If you can reach a quest, move to this field and take it. Remaining steps are lost. One, two, three, four, can. One, two, three, four, has reached a quest. There is no reward for target field and barriers. Okay, so it doesn't get the reward for the barrier. It does complete a quest. Done. My go. Should I not bother going to Maracaibo now? Oh, I was going to go to Port Royal. I don't have the corn. Maybe I should go to Cartagena instead. Oh, but then I'm not doing the exploration. Oh, I could go here. I need two telescopes. I do have two telescopes. Oh, and I was going to go here as well. Oh, so many places I want to go to. 
I want to do. I want to do that, 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 and that. I'm not going to get to do all of these, am I? I'm, I'm going to really struggle to get four upgrades. I've got one, two, three. I mean, I can get my fourth one right here, right now, by going there. I could do it. I mean, I, I've got one round left after this. You don't have to rush this story, do you? Yeah, I don't think you do. So, okay. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to go to Cartagena. Oh, I don't have the corn. Oh, maybe I won't then. Maybe I won't. What's my movement bonus? Four. One, two, three. Have I got two books? No. One, two, three, four. I'd be over the barrier. That'd be five points. And that'd be that and that and that. Oh, tricky. Go to 17, buy a pioneer and then do a quest. Yeah, because that's a village, isn't it? And I still do get a village action. Yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah, I was hoping I'd have the corn. So yeah, we just go one, two, three, four, five. Port Royal, skip that. Go to Porto Cabezas. That's where we're going to go. So before doing the action, I can take a thing from my board and put it on there. So this is really hard to do this. I'm not sure which one to take. I think I might take the hand size one. Is it too late for that? It will help me do the other quests later, which I don't think I need. No, I'm going to take... I'm going to take this one. So that goes on there, and that goes on there. And does that mean that quest is now done? You can do action without discarding coin. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. But the reason I wanted to discard the coin, the corn, is to get two discs off my board. So I wanted one for that and one for that. It wasn't just the action. It was the combination of a disc for that and a disc for that. Uh, if you end your movement there before your main action, move one from the ship to the tile. So from your ship to the tile, I think. Once the tile is full, read the reverse of this card at the end of the round. OK, so I'm going to read that at the end of the round. I'll turn it sideways so I know. No, well, I'll remember. And you'll tell me if I forget. Uh, so the main action is now, how far did I move? Where was I? I was there. So I've moved one, two, three, four, five, six. So I get three actions. So the first action is to spend seven coins and a worker to put a third pioneer into play, which gets my income up by another four. One, two, three, four. Now those points are end of the game, aren't they? Yeah, those points are end of the game instead of the final income, from what I remember. Okay, so that goes there. You can't see them now, can you? Still can't see them. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to encroach upwards. There you go. Uh, how many quests does Jean have on a shipboard? She has four quests, which is 20 points at the end of the game. Um... Yeah, I'm also not adding the points on for these cards that I'm playing. I, I think you do that at the end of the game as well. I think so. Can't remember. So that's me done. Uh, draw back up to my hand size, which is four. Do I want to put any cards into play? Uh, yes. I'm going to put that one into play, which means I get to draw another card. I've got two telescopes, so I'm all right for telescopes. I'm just going to draw one from here. Yeah. Okay. Jean. Moves one, going round the bottom. So we ignore that. We go to here. Uh, so it is put a disc on the city and then gain one influence with France. There you go. Done. Try to do the next quest. How many long view do you have in hand? Long view. I'm not sure what you mean. 
But yeah, I, I, I kind of want to do this. This, this was my plan. Um, it's interesting that that's three points and that's only two points. That's really weird, that. Because normally points go up the more of something you get. Right, my go, I'm going to move one and we're going to do the quest. So I'm going to discard two telescopes. To do this quest, I get two points because I have two compasses. One, two, and I get two explorations. Three, four, five. So I got five exploration points, and I get two points for that. One, two. So five exploration points. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, I'll go four, five. I'll go there and I will get influence with um, Spain and I've crossed the blue barrier which means I get four points one two three four okay uh, did I take three village actions oh no Wait a minute. Yeah, you're absolutely right. When I landed here, I did that, and then I forgot to do stuff. So what did I actually do? I did one thing, didn't I? I took a card. Did I forget to do two other actions? If I did, I'll just take two coins. Thank you. Uh, two points per each quest at that point. Not sure what you mean by that. Yeah, I only bought a Pioneer. Thank you, Renee, and thank you, Alexander, for, uh, for reminding me. Oh, long view is the telescope. Yeah. Oh, and two combat points because of this. Oh, yeah. There we go. God, what would I do without you? As I say, first game, I'm going to be very rusty, <laughs> he says. Second game, I'll be still rusty. Game 10, I'll still be rusty. Um, yeah, so now it's next turn, and I did the quest, and I did the quest, and I got the points, and... We're all good. Yeah, I'm not sure what the comment was about two points for each quest at that point, says Peter. Um, because that is final scoring, two points per quest. So anyway, right, I think we did Jean, then we did me, and I did the quest, so it's back to Jean again. Moves one. So... Nothing, 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 nothing. She sneaked here again. Um, removing card three. That is Jean's fifth card. Gets replenished. And two explorations. So one, two. Yeah, cannot reach a quest. Takes the shortest way. There is no reward. Yeah, so it's just two. Two explorations. Doesn't get any reward. Not a very good turn. Oh, each quest you do gets two points from now on. That. Right, okay. It's, it, yeah, it just seems a bit odd that quest number four gets you three points, but quest number five only gets you two. I know, uh, yeah, it's two points from, from each one. But yeah, it just seems a little odd. My go, uh, I move to here, and I get two explorations. Three, four, five. Five more explorations. So one, two, uh, I'm missing two cards in my hand. There you go. Uh, three, four, five, which is two points. Uh, and no other bonuses. Nope, that's okay. I could go for less, but no, I'm going to push ahead on there. Yeah, we're going to go for that. And that's my go done. And then Jean draws a card. It doesn't really matter because she moves to there uh, and removes card number one. Or sorry, takes card number one. That's her sixth card. And that gets replenished and she gains one influence in Spain. Spain. Okay, we're done. So that's the end of round three. We can, both players can now buy a card or get two points. Well, I can buy a card or get two points. And at this point in the game, I, I'm saving up for these. So I don't think, I mean, I'm about to get 22 money. But I'm looking at these cards in my hand. Oh, and I've got these as well. 
Ah. Did we get a third French cube on the board? I didn't. Rats. Um, do I want to play this? Oh. I'm not sure now. I mean, this is four extra income and two points. So it's going to cost me seven and a worker, but I get four back straight away. Hmm. Might be worth it. Yeah, that's more endgame points as well. Okay, I'm going to do it. Uh, I am going to spend seven money and a worker to buy a sailor. Um, and that increases my income by four. One, two, four. Okay, so income. I get 26 money and four points. One, two, three, four. 26 money. Okay, so now I'm loaded. Um, discs, discs come off. What was the quest card result? We'll read that in a second. Uh, get rid of the offer. Four new cards. We will reveal the last prestige building. Oh, look, it's the Academy. Uh, and then the story progresses. We will do points for Jean, though. Jean gets eight plus six. 14 points for Jean. 38. Right, and then we're going to read both story cards. So we'll read the uh, Plague Victims one first. Saving Portobello, you have saved many people by getting them safely to Porto Cabezas. By doing so, the village has grown into a city. Remove the now full tile L10 and replace it with L1. How cool is that? So Porto, Porto Cabezas is no longer a village. It's now a city. Yeah, evolving boards are a, are a thing. Um... Add tile L1 to the game and place a quest onto it. Okay, so it's a city, but with a quest. Okay. There we go. Uh, you can now use a city action to fulfill a quest there. Reveal a new quest after doing so. So there is always a quest in Porto Cabezas. Okay, nice. And on the main storyline, we have paid off the loan shark. Uh, buy the master builder gives me six, three points. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, Jean will stop there but not take the quest. Okay, thank you. You grudgingly pay Diego, the loan shark, what Dr. Edward owes. As an add card 92 to the discard pile and read 9. Okay, so we need to get card 92, which will be another character. Loan shark Diego enters the game and we're now reading card 9. Chapter 2. Okay, so this is the odd thing. With this game the games and the chapters are not in sync okay so this is game one but we are about to enter chapter two of the story okay and that's just what happens you don't it's not game one chapter one game two chapter two the chapters yeah don't follow along well they, they do but you know what i mean so yeah chapter two the story so far previously on maracaibo a plague has broken out in the caribbean only Dr. Edward may know how to produce the cure. In Portobello, the doctor examines the corpses. After a while, he smiles and says, I think I know a cure. Suddenly, pirates appear. Dun, dun, dun. So we have another story card, uh, another story tile in 15. Uh, we need a quest in 16. Okay. There's got to be a better way of doing this. This is a bit fiddly, actually. This is because this keeps moving around on the board. So I, th I think next, I think I'm not going to use this from now on. I'm actually just going to. It's nice to hold them, and I get it, but it's annoying me that they move around all the time. So I'm just going to put that there. Um, no more quest. Take tiles L20 and L21. More legacy stuff. L20 and L21. What the heck are these? L20 and L21. Right, okay. So, oh, 
So 15 and 16. Ah, right. OK, so they've now got pirates on them. Uh, rule, you cannot carry out village actions in villages with schools. Only fulfill quests or use assistance. Right, so these are the, so pirates have appeared here. And all you can do is complete the quest. You can't do any village actions. Right, that makes total sense thematically. Got it. Draw bags. Yes. Yeah, I could use a draw bag. But yeah, I like them there. They're, they're all right there. Because you can see the next one. And I, I assume the design of the game is that you are supposed to see the next one. Because uh, otherwise they would be face down. Right. So we're now in chapter two of the story. And it is now ship to go to Havana. And it's my go. This is round four. How are we doing for time? Quarter past four. I really did want to play two chapters today. But I don't think I'm going to be able to, to be honest. I'll just have to play more next week or I might sneak an extra one in at the weekend because I need to cook dinner tonight and we're having fish cakes and it's a new recipe uh, and I'm cooking it from scratch. I'm actually, you know, going to the pond, catching the salmon, uh, the pond as in Tesco. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm probably only going to do one chapter today, unfortunately. Uh, sorry, one game today, but I will be back definitely with more streams. Right, my go. This is the last round. I need to get as many points as I can. And we need to sort these pirates out. Now, how do we sort these pirates out? I need two telescopes there and two telescopes here. Right. I also only have three cards in hand, which is not right, is it? I should have a fourth card. OK. Yes, you do have to play this tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'd, I'd love to play it tonight as well, but I'm learning how to play Too Many Bones tonight ready for tomorrow's live stream of too many bones so yeah it's going to be a busy day for me if you are a patron supporter of mine then on the slack channel tonight i will be posting a link to a private live stream that i'm doing of too many bones tonight me and rick are going to be learning how to play the game tonight um but yeah that's only for it's a behind the scenes video of of, of that ready for the live stream tomorrow uh, for those of you that are interested who are patron supporters Right, where are we going to go? Are we going to try and get more discs off the board? Yes, we are. I need to get one, two. I need to get one more disc off the board, and then I've got I've got four upgrades. Now, can I get more than one disc off the board? Hmm. But I don't have any tobacco in hand. I don't really, so, so I'm not bothered about that. I'm not really bothered about this. Is this going to help me? Because I have hardly any influence. I mean, there, there hasn't been much in the way of these cubes going on the board. At all. We could do Porta Plata. Because I do have corn. And I could do with that. And one village action would allow me to play the master builder. Okay, so with tile L1 in play, you can make strategy on the quest. Yeah. Okay, I think we're gonna go to Porta Plata. So one, two, three, four. We deliver some corn. That unlocks that, which is my fourth upgrade. And then I gain one influence with the English. You know, a bit of dabbling. And then I spend six to buy the Master Builder. Better late than ever. <laughs> but yeah, we'll build the Master Builder. Okay. Um, do I want to put any of these other cards in play? Where am I going to go after this one? I need, I need the telescopes. Uh, I don't have any telescopes, so I think I'm going to buy a card. We could do with visiting my apprentice, or oh, sorry, my assistant. That would be quite good. I need three goods of the same. I have two sugar already, so yeah, I'm going to spend one to buy. Oh no, it's free now. Oh, and I should have got three points. 
I should have got three points, and it's now free for me to take a card from here. So I'll take that one. Okay, done. The campaign looks really good. Yes, it is. Uh, oh, very good, Kenneth. Pirate's second favourite game, Lost Ruins of R. Oh, knack. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Right. I think we're done. We went there. I did that. I did that. I played a card. We're all good. Gene. And I like the way, I mean, there's five different difficulty levels of this game, and it's just, it's the makeup of these cards. It's really simple to, to adjust the difficulty level of the game. Right, need telescopes. I'm going to visit the assistant next, then I'm going to get some telescopes. So Gene moves two. One, two. Yeah, goes around the top. Cannot put a thing on the board, but instead takes this card. I think that is Gene's seventh card. And then gains one influence in Spain. Okay, done. My go, I'm going to visit my assistant. So I've moved two spaces. I'm going to use the assistant. I throw away three cards with sugar on. Uh, three identical goods. I get five coins, two victory points, and two combat points. Now, can somebody remind me what this icon is here where it says slash worker? Does that mean when you're in combat, you can use workers as combat points? I think it does. I probably should have a fight because I've got all these combat points and I'm not doing anything with them at all. Um, right, at the end of my turn, I draw up and I need telescopes. But there's only one telescope here. So I take that, which is free. Yeah, can spend a worker for combat points. Are you sure Jean got her VP income last time? Yeah, got like 13. It was like six points plus or eight. Yeah, it was, it was 14 points for Jean. I definitely did it. Yeah, I'm going to have to take two cards from here, but I don't have telescopes. Telescopes? No telescopes. Rats. And I also need to explore. Right, jeans go. Two spaces. So, ignores that, ignores that, ignores that, ignores, ignores. Stop, that's one. Two. Okay, need another another card in here. Ooh. So Jean has moved two spaces. Jeannie's gonna rock it through this turn. That goes on there. And then four points. One, two, three, four. And then exploration four. Can she get a quest? She can. One, two, three. Stops and does the quest. Okay. That's it. My go. I might just have to not do this story stuff this turn because I need to be I need to be doing other stuff that gets me points and whilst progressing the story is a good thing to do we're already in chapter two I I do not need to do it this turn because Jean has gone that way Jean is not doing the story so I can leave these pirates and come back another time so we could, we could go to Maracaibo for the first time. I can actually deliver some sugar to Maracaibo, but do I want to? Yeah, because I need to use all these combat points. And, and this is the whole, this is the part of the game that I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, Yogi Bear confirms that I did give Gene 14 points. Yeah, three turns to go. So shall we go, shall we do a bit of combat? Because I've got all these combat points and it would be a waste otherwise. Um, yeah, let's do that. So one, two, three, four. I will deliver some sugar to Maracaibo. Now I can unlock this now. I'm going to put that on there and we're going to do combat. So I've completely forgotten how this bit works. I now know how the solo bit works, but I don't know how the actual combat works. So we're going to just look this up again. There will be a lot less looking up next time I play. In fact, yeah, no, I've, I've had an idea of something that I might do tomorrow. <laughs> Just play more of this instead of doing the vlog. I'll check with my patron supporters and see what they want me to do. 
Um, I could delay the vlog to next week and do another one of these tomorrow afternoon. Let me know. Let me know what you think I should do. Combat, here we go. Right, we are combating. Reveal a combat token from one of the two piles. Right, so we're going to reveal a combat token. And it is... It is that one. Is it going to focus? No, nope, it's not going to focus. It clearly needs a bigger area to focus on. So, um, choose which of the three fighting nations is engaged in combat, is engaging in combat, and immediately pay or take the corresponding costs or bonuses. Right, so I could choose the English and I would get a point, or I can choose the French and I get four points. Or I could choose the Spanish and I get five points. There you go. But the, the, the one that's currently in the lead, which is, uh, they've all got two. So none of them are in the lead. Okay, so it's, it goes out of focus. Where, where have I got to get it to focus? There you go. So because they've all got two on the board, I can choose whichever one I want, really. Um, and the one that I've got the most in is the French. So I kind of want the French to do better. Um, so I don't have to pay anything and I don't get anything. And then I perform combat actions. You can perform multiple combat actions, but you can only perform each action once. Right. So actually, it probably doesn't matter which one I use because... Oh, no, it's two or five and four or six. So I could actually spend 11. Yeah, if I've understood this correctly, English for the bonus point, René same French. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the French. Because if I've worked this out correctly, I get four and I'm going to spend seven of my own combat values. So that's 11. And with 11, I can do the better version of the top combat action and the better version of the bottom combat action. So that is six slash cube. So the top one is gaining influence. So I spend five of my combat points to gain two influence with France. Right, the bottom one is four or six. Choose a flag on the board. Uh, if no present there, reduce. Oh, it costs four. Okay, so I could actually just kick somebody else out. Yeah, we could reduce the value of the Spanish. So we can do it. We'll spend six and we'll kick out the Spanish. And I think that goes back there. I think that goes on there and I get four coins. Is that right? Is that right? You need France cubes to play the card. No, I got rid of that card. Oh no, this one. Yeah. Yeah, I could do, but it might be a bit late in the game for that. You can pay as many combat points as you want from the ship. Each one costs you one. You can never have more than eight combat points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think that's right. Spanish cube is out of the game. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh yeah, that's what that bit is up there. Spanish cube is out of the game. So you've not it's not like uh, Mombasa, uh, where the cube actually goes back here and the value of each company rises or decreases. Um, but I think that's right. I think I think I've done that right. So I did the combat, that is my go done. Uh, I am going to draw back up. Where do I want to go next? As you say, two turns left. Oh, and I get a combat tile. Yay, I've done a combat. <laughs> um, oh, I'm just going to draw a card. I think at this stage, because I'm going to be buying a prestige building. Ooh, Drill Master. So many different cards in this game. Right, Gene. Moves one. So Jean goes to here because this, this is a city or this is a village. It's a small circle, but it's got a banner. I thought this was now a city. Anyway, as Rene says earlier on, stops there, puts a disc on there, but doesn't actually do the quest. Okay, that's fine because instead, he does an exploration of two. One, two, which is nothing. 
Right, that's that's brilliant. That's that's good. That we like that. So I'm I'm actually going to get a few more turns. So do we go to Cartagena and get the fifth upgrade, and then I can flip this over, or do we go up the exploration track and try and get something nice and juicy up here? Oh, we could actually get both. Yeah, I could get both. I could just go here. We could just miss Port Royal and just go here. Or I could go here. No, I think I, think I might go here. So let's beat her to it. Renee is right, you get another influence with France. Oh, okay. And you're saying it is a city, but if it's a city, why has it still got a small circle? I mean, it's got the, the heptagon. Is that a heptagon? One, two, one. Octagon. It's got the octagon, but it's the fact that it's a small circle. Got small circles meant, um, yeah. Port Royal is a good choice. Well, yeah, but so is that. I and mean, we could do some more fighting. Some more French cubes on the board. Um, what was I thinking about? I was going to look up. Oh, I've completely forgotten. What's my train of thought then? No, what was I thinking about before I looked at the chat? Oh, another influence with France. That's, that's it. Ah, uh, yes. It's. Um, yeah, choose the flag on the board. It's, it's printed on here. Influence with the country, put a cube on the board, and the flag bonus. Okay, got it. Thank you. Cities have banners, villages have not. The size of the circle doesn't matter. Right, okay. I think I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to get the two exploration points, plus three is actually five exploration points. But I don't want five exploration points. I want two. Okay, because I get four points for being the first to cross the line. And I'm landing on that space, which means I remove a disc. And I'm going to remove this disc from there, which means I now have five upgrades, which means I'm going to complete that for three points and three money. It's all coming together. And because I've cr crossed the green barrier, I get that for four points and four money. Okay, uh, and then I flip this career over for two points and two money. And I am now an appointed admiral. Awesome, my career is complete. Um, that's just free stuff that you can do on your turn. Yeah, so I landed there, did the exploration, did all of that, moved up, completed all of that. We're good. Ship's got a flag. Yes. Gene. Gene moves only one. The Gene moves there. Uh, can't place a thing, so removes card number four from the display. I've lost track of how many cards that is for her. I think it might be eight. Gets replenished. And then my go, I move to there and just get three points. And do nothing else. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you just move there and get three points. Okay. Uh, so Jean is next. Jean moves two, but I think stops there. Is that right? Jean on the homeward bound spaces surely has to stop. Jean should do a combat at 20. Oh, did I miss the... Uh, Oh yeah, I missed the card, sorry. Uh, did that, right, combat. So we draw a tile. Come on. Right, we're working out what this is. So it is whoever's in third place, but it's tied. No, it's Spain. So Spain is in third place. Right, so France. France first. Four, five, minus three is two. So France is two. Spain is two. Three, four, five, six, seven, six. Spain is six. And England is three, 
454. So it's Spain. So she advances with Spain, we put a cube, and it goes in the lowest numbered city, which is here. Okay? And gets two influence with that one. Oh, it's going to increase the points. Yeah. Okay, that's that done. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so what does Jean do when Jean moves to here? Do we just do we just follow the card? And she gets an influence. Yeah, and then on my go, I move to there and get five points. Okay, and that's it. The round ends. I can now buy a card, and at this point, I, I've got way too much money now. <laughs> so yeah. So I spend 19 to buy. That one's worth 10. That one is worth 12. That one is worth 10. So we buy the Abbey. So after all that, put that on there, I buy the Abbey. That gets me a crown. And because of the crown, that goes up by two. Because of the synergy bonus with my village that I've conquered. I mean, I do like the way that the synergy bonuses are actually thematic. They, they do fit. Um, but that's that. Okay, income. So instead of the 26 money, I get six points. And then I get another six points for this. So that's 12 points. Puts me on 70. Uh, Jean gets um, 12 plus, and I think it's eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so 20 points for Jean. 62. Uh, discs come off. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Uh, oh, it is now this. Uh, points for cards and prestige buildings. Is that right? I got way too much money, said no one ever in Maracaibo. That's me. Oh, and two points for being the first investor in the building. Yes, thank you. So points for cards. So first of all, my, oh, I got the wrong one. Uh, yeah, that one that I meant to get. So four points per barrier passed. That's 12 points. Points for other cards. That's these. Okay, so nothing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, fifteen. Fifteen points for cards. Ninety-nine. Does Jean get points for cards? Hmm. If she doesn't, I'm zooming ahead. Oh, I can never find the solo rules. Solo rules, here we go. Uh, end of game scoring. Game end. Game ends as usual after the fourth round. Final scoring as usual. Score Jean's influence marker as if she was a human opponent. Uh, she also gets five points for each quest tile. Okay, so I don't think she gets the points for the cards. Yeah, one point for the cards and the free spaces. Oh, Russ is here. You're way too late. Yes. Well, I'm just finishing. I'm just scoring up. So you've missed the game, uh, but you are going to see the final scoring. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, she's got one, two, three, four, five quests. That's 25, 87. Uh, and now we do the scoring up here. So if I've understood this correctly, France is worth two points. I'm on times three, so that's six for me. Uh, Jean is on times one, so that's two. Is that, is that how that works? No, there's, there's this. And I've forgotten about that. The one with the most cubes on the board is France. So that's actually worth an extra two points for each one. I'm just going to check this again. Because, yeah, it's been so long since I did this. Final scoring. Majority bonus. Count how many nation markers are on the board. The nation with the most one receives a majority bonus of two. And then for each nation, multiply your noble rank by the nation's multiplier. Score that many points. So check how many nation markers are on the... Oh, right, okay. 
For each nation, multiply your noble rank by the nation's multiplier. Determine each nation's multiplier, which is the number of empty spaces. Add the majority bonus. So France, France's bonus is actually four. Is that right? Yeah, plus two per cube. So France is four. Multiplied by six is 24. So I've added 12. I'm going to add another 12. Okay, and I'm adding another... Not another 12, another six. And I'm adding another two to green. Okay, there's something before we finish about the noble rank I just want to mention because of what happened earlier on. Um, second most on the board is tied between Spain and England, so I don't think there is a second place. In case of a tie, all tied nations rece receive the higher value. Oh, okay, there is. Right, okay, so Fram, uh, sorry, Spain is two plus one is three. So three times three for green is nine, and three times one for me is three. England is one plus one is two, so I get two uh, and I get four. One, two, three, four. I think that's right. I think that is right. And then using the same rules for interim scoring, check to see which story cards have had their requirements fulfilled. No. If a new story card is added to the game, add it to the game board as usual. No. Right. Okay. So that's that done. What's this? Might have missed that. Uh, that is for each nation, check which player has gained the most influence. For each nation, the player with the most scores three. Okay, so three for blue, six for green. Six. Um, okay, yeah, so noble rank, it says you multiply your noble rank by the thing and it says, uh, yeah, your noble rank is the value of the last red band you reached on the influence track. It's got to be the times three, but it's, yeah, it's not quite clear. Um, I think that might be it. Is that, is that it? Is that it for the scoring? Is the third place counted? Six points for you and three points for Jean. Yeah, I, th I think I've done it. I think I've done all the scoring right now. Yeah, it's clever and it works out and, it, and it's, it's logical. So yeah, it does say if, in case of a tie, all tied nations receive the higher value. So if there were three French cubes on the board and three Spanish, they'd both get the two. And then there would be no third place. And if all three nations are, three nations are tied for this, they all get two. Um, so yes, yeah, friendly ties. In our case, France had the most, so got the two. England and Spain got the one. Right, okay. That, I think it is, is it. So let's, let's check the scoring, see how well we did. If Jean has more quest tiles than you, oh right, this is another thing. If Jean has more quest tiles than you, she scores 10 points. If she beats you by three quests, she gets 20. If she beats you by four, scores 30. Right, it's a good job I got five. Because that would have been an extra 10 points. Count how many of these spaces Jean emptied on the Automa board. Compare that number to the number that you upgraded on your ship. So she did four upgrades. I did five. Um, if she emptied more spaces than you upgraded, she scores... Yeah, okay. If Jean's Explorer is ahead of yours on the track, no. She scores 10 points. If she's further ahead, 20. If she's 11 or more, 30. You won. Yay! I did. 119 versus 110. So I only won by nine points. Uh, okay, James is here as well. Uh, the, the points on the box on the right of the solo board. Oh, what's all this? Oh, that's the bit that I'm just doing now. Right, okay, so it's all printed on there. So basically, yeah, quests. If she's got more quests than me, depending on how many more quests she's got than me, she gets points. Depending on how many more completed upgrades and depending on how much more exploration. As it was, she got no extra points from there. Um, yeah. And what were we playing on? Medium. 
We played on medium. I'm, I'm calling that a result. Okay, so yeah, th this is this is confirmed as, as if it was in any doubt. Although it's been a year since I've played, my memories of this game are it's fantastic and I absolutely love it. And that hasn't changed. This, this, this was brilliant. This is really, really good. Really enjoyed this. Not going to do chapter two today because it is 10 to five. So this has been almost three hours. Um, thank you for bearing with me. and Thank you very much for all of the help. As I mentioned, this morning didn't go to plan, which means I wasn't able to do all of the prep that I wanted to do for this. But also this was not a sponsored video. This has been done purely for fun, effectively funded through the Patreon campaign. Um, so yeah, it's a bit rough and ready for the first one. The next one, chapter two, or sorry, game two, I'm pretty sure will be an hour and a half. I, I, I can't see it taking longer than an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, this was a lot longer because I was rusty with the rules, looking stuff up, but the next one is going to go a lot smoother. So the plan is two o'clock every Thursday for the whole of January, I will be doing this. And I wanted to get the whole campaign done in January. Um, unfortunately, February for me sees a return to uh, normal work, um, which is producing board game videos, but Obviously, the time it takes for this one, this, is, this has basically cost me hundreds of pounds in lost income. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying all the time I take off work to do stuff like this actually cost me a lot of money. That's fine for January, but in February, the work starts again. Um, otherwise, I would just continue this until February. So the concern I have is I'm not going to finish this campaign by the end of January, and then I'm going to struggle to fit it in alongside everything else. So. We'll see how it goes, but it's definitely happening next, next, next Thursday, two o'clock, uh, and the Thursday after two o'clock. So if I only do two next Thursday and two the Thursday after, that would be five games in total. I don't think that is anywhere near enough to finish the campaign. So each week I am going to look at my schedule, I'm going to look at my calendar, uh, and, and I'm going to try and fit some extras in, because I would love to get to the end of January having finished the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth campaign and the Maracaibo campaign. So I can go into February with those ticked off the list and done. At the moment, at the current rate of progress, that is nowhere near going to happen. So I need to decide uh, what I'm going to do moving forward. Uh, I'll speak to my Patreon supporters um, to see what, what they think I should do. We've got a few options. Um, they probably just want me to basically work harder and do more live streams, knowing them. But... It was fine because that's what I want to do. Um, but anyway, we'll see. I'm going to go head downstairs and start doing the fish cakes. I do need to make sure a lot of this is written down. So I'm going to take a little bit of time out now before fish cakes to work out exactly what I need to put in what bags because I believe game two starts where this left off. So the story, we're in chapter two. I think that is fixed. Uh, and I just need to make sure I do that before I clear this away. Because uh, in three hours time, I will be live, uh, not public, it will be a private stream for Patreon supporters uh, with too many bones. So I need to get all of this written down, packed away, then I need to get out too many bones ready for tonight. Uh, that's the plan for today. But anyway, for now, uh, thank you very much for everybody for watching. As Rene says, third printing of the rules, a lot clearer. The rulebook was okay, not, not amazing, but it's a complex game. The rules were okay, uh, but they have been fixing them. And the third printing of the rules are definitely more clear in a number of places. So I might, I might have to do that. Um, yeah, so the next stream of this, definitely next Thursday, maybe before next Thursday. We'll, we'll see how we get on. Anyway, we're all done. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters again. Uh, and as it says in the bottom, all ad revenue from this video and all of the rest of the videos that I do in January is all going to charity. Uh, it's the Macmillan Cancer uh, Research Char Charity or Cancer Looking After People with Cancer Charity. Uh, anyway, it's the Macmillan Charity. That's where all of the money is going. But if you were annoyed by the adverts at the start of the video, yeah, that money has gone to charity. It's not much. Um, obviously, I'm not one of the big players in terms of, uh, you know, getting 10, 20,000 views on, on videos. But, you know, every bit helps. And each month I do manage to raise a fair bit of money, which goes to charity. And that's thanks to you for watching. Yeah, we're, anything, we're all done. Toodle pip, says Matthew. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all later on. Take care.
proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.